Hello, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate Bargetzi with Brian Bates, Aaron Weber. Uh, Mizzen in Maine. Dress up with ease. Any other dress shirt just will not feel as good. Go to MizzenInMaine.com. Use promo code Nate. You will receive $35 off any regular prize order. A regular price order of $125 or more. That is $35 off at M I Z Z E N A N D M A I N.com and use code Nate. Mizzenandmain.com. Use code Nate. Also, big thank you to our new sponsor, Allbirds. Uh, get your Allbirds wool dasher mizzles today at Allbirds.com. Uh, I think a lot of people know what Allbirds is, but it's A L L B I R D S.com. Allbirds.com. Uh, new year, new you. Take care of your mental health with Talk Space. Visit talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month when you use promo code Nate at sign up. That is $100 off at talkspace.com, promo code Nate. And finally, shout out also to our new sponsor, Three Day Blinds. If you need new blinds, uh, forget confusing showrooms. Uh, with Three Day Blinds, they bring uh, the showroom to you. Get the three day blinds. Buy one, get one. For, buy one, get one. Fifty percent off deal on custom blinds, shades, and drapery for a free, no obligation consultation. Just head to three day blinds.com slash Nate and use our code Nate. That is number three, D A Y blinds.com slash Nate. Welcome, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> we're here. This was we got in, I got in today. A lot of snow, yeah. Uh, in Nashville, uh, I feel like I get into it. You like the snow, huh? Get into it in what way? Just get into it, wake up. No, I, I went to. I, well, I woke up at like ten. We got here at like ten this morning, and I fell asleep. And I got here, and then so and I'm up. Uh, do I like? To, I don't know. I like snow. I guess. Mm-hmm. You guys got. I saw the official numbers this morning. Brentwood got just under seven inches. Nashville yeah. Airport, close to where you live, one point four. Yeah, my Abigail, my sister said, I mean, she was like, they got nothing in Old Hickory. Yeah, it was a joke in my neighborhood. That's why when you were like, hey, just be warned, our neighborhood's pretty bad. I was like, dude, it's nothing out here. It's, a, it's like a different place. Yeah, 100%. That's crazy. Yeah, not that far. No. I mean, I, yeah, I didn't even, I was like, what? Like, Abigail said that. I, yeah, because we were like, all right, is everybody going to make it? Like, I don't, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, it's, we had to stop our bus at the beginning of the neighborhood because we had, it was just kind of tough to get all the way back here. I mean, there's so much snow here. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. You know what I notice is a big problem is people don't wipe the snow off the top of their car. Mm-hmm. And I'm that driving way. behind people, and it's like I'm dodging huge pieces of ice and yeah. snow. It's a real problem. I think it's it? against the law. That was me in front of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're pulling the neighborhood. Isn't it against the law? I think so. I think you're supposed to. It should be, man. Yeah. And they just let it. That's how they get it off. Well, they're driving down the interstate. And it's just smoke. It's you know, it's yeah. becoming gas, and then just big pieces, mm-hmm. eighteen wheelers, ice falling off of it. Well, how they get, they can't get up there on the eighteen wheelers? Wow, you should have thought about that when you got an eighteen wheeler. Yeah, you know, get they a ladder, get a top, get a ladder, get try to there. find a bridge that's just <laughs> perfect. close enough, just perfect, and just kind of go right under it, <laughs> like you're a bear scratching your back, like just. <laughs> He had to do some work. We were like, I need a, I need one to be just, you know, just right enough. Just half an inch of clearance. There, there has to be a bridge that's like, that's uh-huh. good. And he uh-huh. just goes all of <laughs> oh, I felt good. One car behind him. Uh, <laughs> I was in Roanoke, Virginia with Leanne Morgan, and there's supposedly we're going to get a foot. I don't know how much they got, but all flights were canceled. Uh, I was supposed to fly home at 6 a.m. yesterday, yeah. before, right before it hit. They canceled all the flights the night before, so I went to the airport as soon as I got off stage and rented a car and drove home. Oh, really? Yeah, I drove all night and got home just when it changed from rain to snow. Oh, wow. Yeah. What just time did you get it. home? Like 4 a.m. Oh, this morning? No, the night before, oh. like yesterday morning. Yeah. Your flight was at 6 a.m. the next day? Yeah, and it wasn't hitting Roanoke till like nine, so yeah. we thought, well, we'll we'll at least get out of Roanoke. We thought we'd get stuck in Atlanta. Where yeah. And uh, it's almost like that little airport, just like, you know what? No reason to go to work for a couple hours. It's yeah. just shut everything down. Yeah. I mean, they just shut down every flight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. We were, yeah, I mean, it was fun being on a bus because it was like, you're just like, you're not having to deal with like a plane. You know, I mean, you're on a bus, so you don't mm-hmm. want to get stuck or something. But it was, 
It snowed. Uh, Rick here, bus driver, but I mean, he drove. He's great through the night. Yeah, he was great. I mean, we. I feel like nothing phases him. Rick has been. He's, he's seen, just it seen it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, they get stuck. I mean, we got. We you know, there's. Yeah, you go drive up in Canada and stuff like. I mean, they have to drive. The bus you go drive everywhere. It's nice having a bus because it's nice just being like, all right, like I can, you know, I don't know, not going to the airport and then you're just in the bus and I don't know. There's just, you kind of got everything there. So you're, you know, you just feel like if you even got stuck, you'd be like, all right, we got all our stuff here. Yeah. Obviously a bus would be better than a car. Uh, that's, yeah. That's what I drove it this weekend. Drove my minivan to Iowa and back through that snow. Yeah. Yeah. West Wing. No, I had somebody else in the car with me. I had my buddy uh, Joe no. Kelly, and I felt weird watching a show he doesn't know about. Yeah, <laughs> that's so y'all the found one together. <laughs> like, you want to go through the office? <laughs> you run back through Seinfeld? <laughs> we just had the chat. We Were you driving? Talk. I drove the whole way. There so you didn't feel now. weird about watching the TV while you drove, just just because he hadn't seen the show. That's what made you feel weird about. It. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because I pull it up. I want to make this clear. I don't. I'm not like I have it up on my lap, and I'm looking down. I got picture in picture on my phone, <laughs> so I got Google Maps up, and then I got a little small little corner is the West Wing or whatever so you show. Have to lean in to watch it. No, I I got it up on the a little mount right in my car, yeah. and every now and then, you know, the West Wing. What's great about it is it's very. It's not very visual. Yeah, so you can just kind of listen to yeah, it, and then every like now it. and then you just kind of peek over and see what's yeah. going on. And then look back. It's a, it's a great description of a TV show. You don't have to really watch it. <laughs> it's more of a listening. Oh, that's good. So has uh, I can be bored with my eyes and my ears. <laughs> <laughs> has Succession passed it now? Oh, Succession was amazing, man. But didn't you say it was your new favorite show? Oh, I mean, I think, dude, its highs are about as good as it gets. Mm. I don't know if you've, have you seen Succession. Mm-mm. I don't know if you'd like it. I don't. I, I I could be on my way down it's, of yeah. just enjoying stuff from here on out. I could <laughs> I, be on I feel my way that. out. <laughs> just I feel in general. That. Yeah, just in yeah. It's just kind of like I'm not. I'm not a, as good as except like uh, getting new things. When in. was the last show? Or Ted Lasso? Yeah, that was the last one you got kind of passionate about, yeah. and you liked it. Yeah, and you didn't even watch the new season, did you? No, not yet. <laughs> I, I will. I will watch the new season. It's like you get, <clears throat> you just got to get caught. I don't know if it's if it's just me and like if it's I don't know like uh, you know I mean I look I Narcos I love and like this one I just haven't started yet. Yeah. You know it's, I'm having trouble like paying attention to them. I'm like, having trouble like uh, I was like talking to someone uh, Joy McCall who's with us again, but like I was like watching stuff. I was like I, this stuff doesn't like stick with me. I watch it and then it's just like I didn't watch it. We watched a bunch of Matrix at the or you our you didn't go is my. Uh, we saw Matrix at the movie theater, and I mean, I don't remember. I might as well not have went. Like, it, it just meant nothing to me. Uh-huh. Like, I just left, and it's like... Did you have a good you time, the, though? The, the new one? Yeah, the new one. Oh, okay. I don't even really know. I mean, the other ones, it's like... Well, you just learned a couple weeks ago that it was a simulation. We yeah, I didn't even understand the whole <laughs> thing. But I mean, it's like I can just go to movie. It's, 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 it just doesn't stick with me. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't soak it in. I'm not like I'm just kind of thinking. I'm wanting my brain. I mean, there could be stuff wrong with me. <laughs> I mean, are people not supposed to do that? I don't have no. I don't I, you definitely wouldn't like Succession. Then it's a very high effort show. Yeah, it's like you, you gotta know, you gotta like settle in. Let's pay attention to everything yeah. that's going on. Yeah, that's. I think that's not. And Narcos would be hard to watch on the road. If it's all yeah, the like subtitles. I like Narcos. I wouldn't be able to watch. <laughs> it's all a different language. Yeah. <laughs> I love narco, but I don't know. It might just be I. I. I don't think it's. It's like I'm just busier than I've. Uh-huh. Like yeah. I just have too much on my mind, and yeah. that it's like hard for me to even find the time to do it. And if I do find the time, I I, I want to relax, and I yeah. don't want to be invested in. Maybe right. that's it. Yeah. So maybe that's it. You got a career and a family, dude. Yeah. And I have neither, so <laughs> yeah. I can enjoy these shows. <laughs> That's I'm true. trying to get both, but uh, yeah. Aaron watches everything. <laughs> yeah, I got all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's why people watch. But they, you know, you go back and watch like Seinfeld and watch all these old jokes. So you're like, you just like, you know, it's easy. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, just put it on. Zone in and out. Zone in and out. Yeah. And that's all. That's all you're trying to do. That's all we're trying. To, that's what this podcast probably is. <laughs> right. That people zone in and out. You know. <laughs> uh, let's read some uh, uh, comments from you guys. Uh, first up, uh, Kristen Rucker. I know a Rucker. Uh, great episode, guys. The beginning was so relatable from Aaron eating a whole tray of brownies, even though he couldn't taste them, to the incredibly 
hilarious MRI discussion like loading a musket to Nate's inability to stop eating sugar unless he finds out there's something seriously wrong. And Henry Cho was the icing on the cake. I look forward to listening every week, but this one was truly great. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, number one, Critter. Henry Cho is very enjoyable, and now that I know how hard he worked and sacrificed to prioritize his family, I admire his character as well as respect his talent. He's just good people. Yep. He moved a hey, guy. He moved everybody back here. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's a big move. It's good. Uh, Kevin McAllister, 85. I saw the Instagram story about the toboggan before I got the chance to catch up on this podcast. And now that I'm hearing you guys talk about it, I can't keep it together. As a Canadian, I have never heard of a heard a toke, T-O-Q-E. I think it's toke. A toke called toboggan in my life. Watching people say toboggan so naturally in conversation was a trip and had me laughing so hard. Thank you for the completely random moment my, made my day. Yeah, a few things have polarized uh, the listeners as much as oh. this discussion. I don't think anything has. But I it think got it's pretty be- heated. Let's uh, go versus uh, hello. hello. Folks. Yeah, that was the last thing that uh, people have strong. Maybe that was just about. fun. Mm-hmm. This one's kind of fun. I know, but, but as you say, I'm saying is this one get more serious? This one got pretty serious. As serious as a discussion about <laughs> what to call a hat can. Be. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've never heard of toke. I hadn't either. I only have heard of toke through. Uh, Dusty Slay's wife Hannah, who's Canadian, I heard her call oh, okay. it that once. But I, you know, who's calling yeah. it that in real? You life? didn't say anything. No, nah, I let it slide. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I use context clues. I figured out what she was talking. Yeah, about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, generally speaking, it seems like people in the South call it toboggan. Yeah. People in Canada call it a toque, and the rest of the U.S. calls it a beanie. Yeah. But people have sent me articles saying there's different variations. Everything's technically a beanie. Yeah, and then a, a toboggan is a type of beanie, and there's a lot of um, a lot of different things: knit cap, sock cap, stocking cap. Yeah, stocking. But cap. the poll we did, beanie dominated because I think most. Of That's the, what everybody does. Everybody calls it a beanie. I like that. There's a lot of toboggans. Yeah, that does make me feel good. Yeah, but people in Canada were pretty fired up about it. Called it to, toboggan. So if you're listening, it's 437 votes for toboggan. 1,844 votes for Beanie, and then Toke came in last at 216 votes. Kind of probably read those wrong. <laughs> if you're, for people listening at home, if you're in suspense, <laughs> you just did, you did the middle first, <laughs> and then you went first place in the middle, <laughs> and then just, who cares, 216 at the bottom. <laughs> I mean, like, if, I mean, it's the ABC. That's what the yeah, with big arm. We got coming in third place. We have Tope, 216, Toboggan, 437, Beanie, 1844. Yeah. yeah, that would have been the way to do it for sure. Now, you read it maybe the least exciting way you yeah. could read it. Honestly, uh, I don't know if you could pick a worse way. Because even if you, yeah, there, yeah. there couldn't be. That's the uh, only way that's not good is to go 437, 1844 second, and 216 at the end. Uh, there's. I mean, all right. Well, all right. And I didn't even think anything about it when you said it last week because that's what I call no. it. Toboggan. Yeah. I call it a beanie, but I hear toboggan enough that I don't even think about it. Did Who started the poll? Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people were so fired up about it yeah. that I did the poll, and I really got people fired up. <laughs> yeah, I love the read the the different regional terms. They're really funny to me. I had a buddy in college from Wisconsin, and he one day he was like, "I go fill up my water bottle at the bubbler real quick." And yeah. I was like, "What are you talking? That's about? That's crazy." Yeah, the water fountain bubbler. It's a bubbler. I've never heard. And where's he from? Uh, Mil- uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, I might have just been is that him. Milwaukee. Is that? Uh, the bubbler, a bubbler. Yeah, a very small little region in that in that part of the country that calls it a bubbler. Most of the country calls it a drinking fountain. Mm. I've like always called water. it. I've always called it a water fountain. I call it a water fountain. Yeah, water fountain. Because that's what it is. You know, uh, it's because it gives you well, you drink out of it though too. Not always. If you're filling up a water bottle out of it, you're going to drink eventually. It should be eventually <laughs> a drinking fountain. That's fair. <laughs> Eventually, a drink. Yeah, <laughs> watering your plants. Well, I mean, if you look like a nut job, if you can take your plants up there and you, you you're staying in line with a pot, like that's what you would be. You'd be in there's a line, 
of kids just waiting for the turns and you're like four back and you got just a plot or just a pot and then you just set it up there and just turn it on and it doesn't you gotta you gotta bend it over a little bit because the stream's not high enough you get hit with some of those streams oh, yeah. i miss the little turn one was always good but man you ever get you bend down and you get hit right in the oh yeah forehead yeah they don't have the it calibrated eye. right yeah and if you don't know, and then some of them like no water comes out, and you just everybody's mouths mm-hmm. just on it. It's coming out just a little bit, just a little bit, and then you just and kids will just you, your mouth just goes on it. Mm-hmm. It is very funny to be like it will when it just hits you right in the face because you're not even prepared for it. I just remember being in line in school, and it was just the prime chance to kick some like kick someone while they're doing it. What? <laughs> I got kicked a lot. Yeah, I was going yeah. to say, there's no way you were doing it. You were getting kicked while you were no, drinking. No, think about it. It was just me. Yeah. yeah. That's your most vulnerable position. You never saw that? That never happened? Uh, just I don't, boys you know, like to kick each other. I think we grew up in different times. I don't think I was around. <laughs> out of water fountains were just like. <laughs> I had segregated water yeah, fountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you listen to it. <laughs> different, uh, different time? Different time. It's uh <laughs> Did you get kicked a bunch? I mean <laughs> a yeah. couple of times, yeah. It was the prime kicking yeah. position. You're vulnerable, your back is exposed, you're leaning yeah. over. That's when I would kick you for sure. Yeah. How quick are you taking the drink? I think you're supposed to drink like a you know, like an animal drinking out of water where they kinda always kinda keep looking. I mean, you would turn sideways to kind of try to keep an eye on somebody. Yeah. I mean, would you just be in there? Like just drinking, like, I mean, like really drinking. Your head hits the wall because they kick you from behind. You grab your potted plant and walk off. Maybe that's why they were kicking me because yeah. I was watering my plant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kyle Cox, I'm a teacher, and I often tell my students the only way to get better at reading is by reading. Mm. We are now 80 episodes in, and Nate Land is proving <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> Sorry, kids. I know. Uh, like, he's, he's getting better. <laughs> if he slows down, if I slow down, we nail it. Chase House, I noticed at his show the other night that the two guys that opened the show brought their own wireless mic on stage with them, but Nate had a wired mic sitting on the stage waiting for him. Is that a personal preference of Nate's, or is uh, there another reason behind it? Also, I noticed everyone kept looking off to the right of the stage during their acts. Was there like a timer over there to keep track of? I don't know where. Uh... So, yeah, we just, I do have it. So I've, I, start, I don't have the mic stand up there anymore because I just always moved it. And so I just have the stool, and I lay the mic on the stool with my water. And so my stuff's all just kind of set there. And then, so the openers come, and we just have it bring, they just bring wireless mics, just because mine, I do, you have a cord. I don't, uh, using wireless mic is not bad. I think, I don't mind using wireless mics, uh, but I think a long set maybe makes you a little nervous, like, because it's like, well, the battery goes out, but anything goes wrong, whatever. Uh, so short sets, usually it's, you feel fine with it. But do y'all do that because of COVID? No. Uh. No. I mean, maybe, sure. I, we would like uh, anything that I've ever thought I've done because of COVID has been pure accident. Like, did I COVID? Well, uh, like when I'm out with Leanne, they make us use separate mics. They don't make us, but that's their reason uh-huh. is for COVID. Oh. The, the theater does it. No, no, I've never had anybody say anything. Yeah. Well, I don't know why they, uh, but so they, uh, Trying to think now. I don't know. Clubs were doing that for a while. Yeah. All the comics get their own mic. But it'd be very funny to, for you to have a separate mic for everybody because of COVID. Then you go on the bus right after the yeah, show. Yeah. It's like yeah. we're already around we're, each other. Yeah. Uh, no, I just do it like it's like my so my stuff's all set up there so it's ready to go. And then uh, I come out and just grab the microphone. I like the cord. And then the uh, other one's just easier to, you know, to get wireless to go out. That way it's like, I don't know. It's like, I mean, when you have the mic stand, it's like one thing. Uh, cause everything's kind of, everybody puts it back in the mic stand. But once I kind of got rid of the mic stand and I was like, I can't, I like it on the stool now. And I just kind of grab it. And that's why there's no really rhyme or reason to it. And, uh, I try to think we look off to the right. So we looked off to the right, which would be his, so it'd be stage left, right? Is stage left is stage. Is what, it's from the performer's perspective. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if he was looking off to the right, we'd look that way. 
I'm trying to think what show he would be at. I mean, usually there's some people standing over there, or if, if the, you know what? I wonder if he was at the Chicago show because there's we have, we have a clock that's up there in front of the monitor, and so we have it running, so everybody kind of knows what time they're at, and it, it'll just be like a stop clock, like you know, stop one, and so it fell. And so, like, it what might have been they were looking because if Travis, tour manager, was over there, like, sometimes it's a you got to look to be like, hey, are you going to come get this? Or maybe someone's trying to signal you for something. And sometimes you might just look over. I don't know. You just can't just look. If you hear something that can make you look over there, I don't think there's really no reason. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's a big, big reason for any of that. Some guy calling in your jokes like a, like a <laughs> sideline coach. Yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> just bring the. We, uh, Leanne's not doing meet and greets right now. I, again, the venues, I, they don't usually want her to because of COVID. So are you doing meet and greets? Uh, some. I have not done. We kind of just stopped yeah. uh, doing them. They were, uh, I was doing them. Again, I was. You're all in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this uh, after the show, the, outside, this group of people came up, saw me first, and said, love the show. Can, and I said, I was talking to them, and I said, you want to get a picture? And they said, sure. And they said, we're going to leave our mask on if that's okay. And I was like, yeah, sure. I, I thought, all right, they're being very careful, which I respect. And we take a picture. Then Leanne comes out, and they <laughs> see her and freak out and everything. And they're like, can we get a picture? And she says, sure. They all take their <laughs> yeah, mask yeah, off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> take that's the great. So they basically just like, it's not worth the yeah. risk for this guy. We're going to delete it as soon as he leaves yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're gonna leave. They, they've been great at that. Do you mind putting yours on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. We just did this show this weekend. Uh, we didn't have. Uh, this was we have. We didn't have meet and greets. I've had some, so I did stop like doing them. Uh, just because I know some people asked. Uh, not a ton, but it was like they, they're just. It became. It was just too much. Is the is the main reason? It's not that I. We would. We would. Uh. It, it, like we we're, at, we're doing two shows a lot of places the meet and greet could would take 30 45 minutes in between each show it was just like, and i was doing them and it just ends up being like it's a lot of time and it ends up being it, it gets pretty hard to try to do so i, I still try to i'll try to meet people sometimes you see people and i'll it's great to get pictures or mm -hmm. obviously I'll, I'll try you know whatever we can but yeah uh it gets hard we still have some coming up though uh, and some of the like it's, it's, it was only like the there's like a couple shows left i think where it was before we kind of stopped doing them and it how do people did, learn of those is it just on the website like when you buy tickets yeah i mean you can meet me now if you want me to yes like you go buy a meet and greet <laughs> ticket <laughs> you go. no we yeah. get a lot of emails from people asking how to do meet and greets i honestly don't even know you just buy it on yeah you buy i think you buy it on their website but i don't even know if there'll be tickets for sale that are meet and greets anymore gotcha because there are already tickets that were already announced from like covid before covid so i'm still making up some covid shows mm -hmm. so those shows that i'm making up some of those still would have meet and greets because <clears throat> we were we were doing them back then but now any newer shows that went on sale and the ones that we're doing currently we're not doing meet and greets but yeah there is a good chance i might buy tickets sometime <laughs> and i would get to meet and greet yeah just to see you yeah <laughs> Uh, next, <laughs> next, keep it ruling. Put your mask on, sir. Uh, uh, Mike Marcia, Mike Marcia, M A R C I A. I'd say Marcia, yeah. Marcia, I'd say Marcia. Marcia. Marcia, Mike Marcia, maybe no, Marcia. There's no way, <laughs> Marcia. I tell you, I would spell it, huh? I've seen Marcia spelled that way, well, M A R C I A. I don't think you ever have. Uh, uh, well, one of the main characters of Succession, the name is Marsha. That's how it's spelled. Well, how would you know how she spells her name? I watch it with subtitles sometimes. Oh, really? When yeah. he's driving. Yeah. <laughs> well, <I'm trying> <laughs> and she spells it like that, and her name's Marsha. Mm -hmm. I thought that's how you spelled Marsha. Okay. Uh, maybe as a. F I, I mean, I think it's Marcia for a last name. The last name. Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I now. Okay. I now understand why this show is considered an informational podcast. I've never had many cavities but at my last checkup my dentist told me i had 12 <laughs> <clears throat> i didn't understand it for the last six months until last week's episode since working from home i started eating sour patch kids pretty consistently apparently it may have changed ph levels in my mouth thank you for the heads up there you go <clears throat> marcia brady m-a-r-c-i-a there you go i feel like it's a first last name thing though i'll i'll, I'll stick with that maybe yeah. Maybe. I like to think it's a couple 
that share an account. It's Mike and Marsha. <laughs> oh, Mike and Marsha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. A lot of people do that. Yeah. So Mike and Marsha wrote in. Yeah. <laughs> they both have 12 cavities. They both went through the same yeah. experience. Yeah. 12 Six, cavities is, is this a lot, inch. right? Yeah. 12 is insane. Yeah. I hate Sour Patch Kids. I don't think I've had them. I don't think I have them. It's because the Undertaker's. <laughs> yeah. Because he's my dentist. Me, yeah. Aaron Thumb. Thum. <laughs> Hello, folks. Dentist here. Mm. Ooh. While I do agree with Ken, uh, Kim Dunlap, the dental hygienist from last week, that Sour Patch Kids cause pH imbalances that can cause decay. It is my professional opinion that a life without Sour Patch Kids is not a life worth living. <laughs> last week, I pulled a tooth, told the patient to lay off the sweets, then sat in my office and ate a handful of Sour Patch Kids just to make sure to floss and brush, preferably not with cortisone. That should be your so new dentist. Go. Yeah, I know. He's like, fine. I just, my teeth fall out. He's like, I don't, you're good, man. <laughs> just, it was worth it, right? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, you guys, I wouldn't even worry about it. Um, channel Zero, Nate, Batwing, and Aaron. I'm turning 40 at the end of the month and currently weigh in, weigh in at 196 pounds. You've inspired me to join the challenge to hit 165. I always need something to focus on, and there's a tough mutter in Massachusetts the same weekend as your show in June. Let's go, folks. So he's going, do, he's going to do the Tough Mudder. Yep. And then he's going to try to get on Channel Zero. Channel Zero. <laughs> That's uh, Channel Zero. If we see him out after it, Channel Zero. <laughs> and he's like, he goes, Channel, yeah, channel. Oh, Zero, Four. <laughs> oh, you were trying to gain. Yeah. You were trying to get to 200. Yeah. You were the opposite. I think I weighed myself the other day. I was 180 something. I'm floating. I haven't even really started yet. Mm. Have you already started? What have you been doing, Brian? I wanted to ask about your routine. I'm down to 168 right now. Yeah. So Stop. Yeah, <laughs> that's because he's probably got some disease. <laughs> he's got something wrong with him. Like, yeah, diseases he, don't count. Yeah, no. You gotta, you gotta lose it. Y'all did not say that. You gotta whatever. lose it the old-fashioned no. way. <laughs> no. If I, whatever. What, by any means necessary. Okay. Yeah. You know, you're going to stroke off 40 pounds. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I've, uh, I haven't started yet either. I've probably gained a couple. Yeah, I've been just, you know, I'll get there. But we're weighing in at the end of the month, right? I mean, I had a five-pound lead on you anyway, so I thought I could coast for a while. Yeah, I, but I, I went down. I mean, now I'm on the road, so it's like once you're on the road, you just I can't eat. You're not eating as much. But just because you're a go, I'll eat like during the day and then – you know, you only, I mean, your meals go down to maybe one or two. I probably eat two a day. Mm-hmm. I'll eat a bunch of junk, but it's, <laughs> but it's like I'm only eating junk. So it's like that's where my meal comes from. So it's not eating and eating okay. junk. Just it's eating only junk. eating junk. And then that makes you tone up a little bit. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get you down to 165. Austin Thomas. My wife got us tickets to see Nate in Boise in February. She has never been into stand-up, so she hasn't heard any of Nate's stuff. Do you think I should educate her? With some of Nate's old material, material, or just let her go in blind. Uh, you know, it's up to you. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I have people still come to the show, and they're like, "We, you know, especially when I was in Vegas, and there's still people that come to a lot of shows. They're like, we didn't really know who you were, and we came, and then, uh, and they said they like it. It's fun to get to perform for someone that doesn't know. You know, you got to win them over. Mm-hmm. Uh, your, uh, but your previous hour, you had some references to a previous hour Mm -hmm. but this one you don't think you really have no not the hour i'm doing now yeah no and the last one okay yeah the the last one i didn't either okay that was the time before i guess it was the stand-ups yeah and the only one i the tennessee kid i referenced the old a couple of old jokes Mm -hmm. so if you watch those watch those two first but i mean there is a chance your wife watches and is like nah yeah it's not for me yeah what if she doesn't even want to go and then you get to bring a friend that's true. Could be better. <clears throat> Maybe she doesn't let you go. She's like, you can't be watching this stuff. <laughs> it's a waste of time. Uh, yeah, so do whatever you uh, – yeah, I don't know. That's no real answer. But let her come in blind, you know? Yeah. Let her. We'll win her over. Thomas Barbada. My son is 10 and has written, and has written first joke. His first joke. His first joke. I think I left up the his. Just his first space. Or maybe he left it out, but it's supposed my to be son is ten, and he has written his has written his first joke. He wants some professional feedback. 
My little here's the joke. My little brother wants to be a stand-up comedian, but he's kind of lazy. He's more of a sit-down comedian. Pretty good. That's not bad. It's pretty good. It's yeah. not bad. No, it's a uh, it's a good joke. My little brother's stand-up comedian. He's a little lazy. More of a sit-down comedian. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Not I a lot like of fat. No, I don't think you can take anything out of it. My little brother wants to be a stand-up comedian, but he's kind of lazy, so he's more of a sit-down comedian. Get a little laugh there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no. That's how, I mean, that's how you write a joke. There you go. He's on his way. And that's how comics uh, respond to it. They go, <laughs> they don't, welcome to the show, Thomas. <laughs> we don't laugh. We go, yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> that is a good joke. Uh, we're all dead inside. No. I have this this weekend. I have this bit I've been doing for a while about about Jack Link's beef jerky. You've heard it. Mm-hmm. it it's now like a five minute <clears throat> chunk, and I I got it. I mean, it really did the best it's ever done this weekend. I was like proud of it. And I get yeah. off stage, and this guy comes up to me and goes, "Man, I love that Jack Link's beef jerky." And I go, "Oh, thanks, dude." And he's like. Yeah, man. I mean, I always keep some in my car. Like, I eat it all the time. He would just talk to me about the beef jerky. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going, oh, thank you, man. I've yeah. been working on it. Yeah. He's like, dude, I eat it every day, man. We yeah. talked for five minutes about beef jerky, and then he walked away. Like, yeah, it's my art. Yeah. Never mention the joke. No. Yeah. That had been great if he didn't even know you did. Just felt like. He just assumed this guy, guy likes, likes beef jerky. Beef jerky. <laughs> Looks like a fellow jerky boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Deaton I was wondering why comedians rarely, rarely list their openers for tour dates I assume it may be because they don't know when posting the dates or maybe they use local comedians sometimes uh, yeah I don't I mean you sometimes you don't know for sure and you mix it up a lot I guess you could put it on the website I don't know well as somebody who opens for people I think people don't care that's a lot of it. A lot of it is you know? like, yeah. I don't know. That's not that people don't care. I think I'm hoping people like I, when they come see me, it's like, you know, because I'm bringing a lot of comics from that I started with and all that kind of stuff. And so people find out. I mean, I, you know, when I opened for Chris Rock, I mean, I, I saw a lot of people come to shows and that's where they saw me. And uh, but it's like, that's the kind of thing. Like you find out about them. Uh, I would I would think the one thing that I want you to do is like be able to like put like I said, if we ever get video on some of these screens, we to put like whoever the opener is, is like their social media and stuff like that for people to follow them. You know, people got to remember their names. And usually I try to post like a, you know, like I'll post something maybe today, like, you know, for the weekend, like, yeah, thanks for blah, 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 and list the two comics that came out with me. And that's what you do. So some of it's like, you're like, I, I'm about to, you can't, you already got a lot. And then you're also going to be like, well, I can't, I gotta, I'm not, it's not, it's not my job to sell. Do I got to write y'all two down now? <laughs> Make sure they know. Is that going to be the... I knew that's where this was going. <laughs> yeah. This guy asked the question somehow yeah. puts it back on us. It's yeah. going to be... Do you tell them to ask it? Well... Yeah. You're like, I'm not trying to sell less tickets, dude. Yeah. If I can't get you to come on my own, <laughs> then I I mean, I hope... Well, who's the helpers? <laughs> I don't think that's ever been... The way well, to go or not. Because I don't know. Uh... Uh, Alex, Alexis, 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 I think. Alex, A L E X I S, A L E X I S. Alexis, Alexis, Barry, Beery. Went to the Cincinnati show. We waited in the line, wrapped around the block. Everyone was super excited to see the show. A group came to us in line and thought my husband was Nate waiting in line. Photo include. Uh, uh, that's not. It. Did you send this to me? <laughs> that I don't know. I did. I did. Yeah, Cincinnati was uh, Cincinnati was a great show. Uh, they there were all is. great. There he is. Oh, there you go. All right. Just out there. I'd be great. I'd go wait my own line. I remember first, <laughs> I, you, you would have to, Punchline. I remember Punchline in San Francisco once. Uh, it was like sold out. And like to go in, there's only really one way to get in. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just walked up and there's no one really to like, you know, it's like sometimes you just feel awkward to like cut. Mm-hmm. And so you just kind of stand in your own line and just wait till it's your, you're like, man, I'm on the show. <laughs> and then you just kind of go in with them, you know? I've actually done that. Yeah, I've done that at Z- even Zany's. You go yeah. to the front door. And you're just like, I'll just wait. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Till, yeah. Yeah, it's just easier instead of draw- drawing big attention to yourself. 
what I like to do sometimes if I get to open for somebody at a theater is after my set, I get off stage and I exit the back and I try to get through the theater without any credentials. Yeah. And just try to talk my way into. And I can do it. Why? It's a fun, it's a fun, ah, I'm on the show. And they go, hey, we don't know who you are. And I just try to get through that way. It's a fun little yeah. game yeah. to try to, and most people don't care. Yeah. I haven't run into a lot of problems. But so just when the headliner's up, there's just commotion going on in there. <laughs> and it's just it's you screaming, Do you know who I am? <laughs> Being restrained yeah, yeah. in the lobby. <laughs> I was just on stage. I was, I was just on stage. <laughs> Why would I do this? Do you think I'm just making this up? Why would I be a guy that just said I was just on stage? Don't you think you could prove that? You just Google in your name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then every, every show's like, Aaron, could you just stay back here <laughs> or wear the thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to wear it. Uh, I haven't heard. Sometimes you have to wear it. You, they won't let you in. Like, I don't think I've had trouble this time around. But I've had it plenty. I mean, I think one time in Chicago. like The a, Vic. The Vic. They, the guy out of, I mean, I was like, I have to show my ID. And then they had to go get somebody. And before he wouldn't let me back. Your ID wasn't enough? No. He had no idea who's on the show, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he needed. It didn't make sense that we wanted to come to the back door. I was like, but I'm on the show. So you sit there. I know exactly. In the alleyway right there on the side? Yeah, there's just some dude sitting right out there. Yeah, Yeah, I know the exact spot. My guy didn't care at all when (laughs) I I was there last. I go, I'm on the show, dude. And he was like, all right, man. (laughs) Well, Hannibal Burst came to that show, and he got in. And I was like, well, how did you get in? Like, he... I was at my own show, and they didn't even really let me in the handbag. <laughs> Hannibal, I'm like, yeah, Hannibal walked in like five people, and they just let Hannibal in. I was like, how did you get in? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, this weekend was fun. Uh, we had, uh, I was trying to think where we were at. We had a bunch of places. Lexington? Lexington, Kentucky was great. All of them are great. Uh, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cincinnati was great. Chicago, and then uh, Davenport, Iowa last night. Uh, Chicago is special because we, that's where I started, you know, uh, that's where I started comedy. I'm, I don't know, sometimes people don't know that, but I did, I moved to Chicago. I'm just going to be listening here. I've talked about it, but I moved to Chicago first, me and Michael Clay, and we go there and we were doing it. Uh, I, I did comedy there for about a year and a half with Hannibal and Pete Holmes and Kumail Najiani. A lot of them were in the Chicago scene, uh, TJ Miller. And so we, uh, we were we were there, and so like going back to Chicago was like pretty special. And then uh, after the show, we went to Jake Melnick's, and I had uh, Jim Roth. I did a comedy class called Comedy College. Uh, he still teaches a class, and that's a class I took in Chicago. He came to the show. Steve Berger, another buddy of mine, that was in my comedy class when we first started. Oh, came to the show. It was it was really really cool. Man. And then uh, so Liz and Bree, all her friends, Saul and Nicole, and, uh, but they. Uh, I, but like they, it was like, it was neat to get back and see, uh, you know, and I don't know, just like in Chicago. Then we went to Jake Melnick's, the restaurant I worked at and, uh, we went back out there afterwards and hung out and I hung out. We had, uh, a a few people that we worked with Mm -hmm. that came up there and we all just sat back in the back and like, just talked about working there. I mean, it's 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was 20 years ago, uh, to the, to the now, exactly. 2002. Is when we started working there, and wow. uh, and so 2022, yeah. That's where you're working when all the when the Steve Bartman stuff happened. Yeah, you're working at that yeah. restaurant. Mm-hmm. Did that come up at all in your yeah. trip to Chicago? Jen, Jen McDonough, who was there with us, Jen and Matt Peebles, uh, and uh, so Jen was she was the one that's roommate was worked there. So we talked about it there because <clears throat> then she came and she goes. She was telling us like she didn't believe her at the beginning. I was like, oh, I go, well, Jen, I've been telling everybody this story. Like, <clears throat> I've believed you for 20 years. I've told everybody the story. Yeah. But she went, you know, it was, she, we talked about the 30 for 30 and like when she watched that and, you know, cause she went home and told her, I don't remember, like, you know, at the time, I don't remember, I guess, all the details, but she said she was there, <laughs> you know, there's four phones. And when she got home, she was like, why would he be, you know, and then she was like, go oh, look, he has like a diet. Why is there a diet Coke or something in the trash can? Like yeah. who would she's like, I don't we don't drink that. And then she's like, I don't know. You know, and then <laughs> but then she saw him on the 30 for 30 wow. as her roommate. Wow. And you're like, yeah. So we talked about that for a second. But it was like it was just fun to be back at like Jake's and like I, I like going back to stuff. 
You know, when you go mm-hmm. back and you're like, man, yeah, we were the first two people, me and Michael, first two people hired there. The same kind of moment you had at the Opry, right? Yeah. Being back there. Yeah, when you go there and you work. I mean, even, even uh, I mean, the Opry's crazy just because you work. I worked at that music park. I don't think I thought I'd be go play the Opry. Jake's, not that I even think you go play Chicago Theater, but it's crazy. Like, I was there for mm-hmm. to start this career. Yeah. And uh, we, got, we had one, uh, I had someone I met, I won't say where because they're here, like, but backstage. One night, won't say which night. I don't. I don't want this person to hear. It. They can make fun of. Them. But they were. They, they were uh, had a little too much to drink, <laughs> and so we kept joking all weekend. Like it was. This has nothing to do with. I don't know. It just we were re- doing it as a running joke, but it was very funny. Uh, he was like, because <clears throat> I don't drink, you know, and so he had too much to drink. So sometimes when someone doesn't drink and they're like, they had too much, they get kind of embarrassed about how much they've had, which I don't. You know, they're you're they're young. It's like I you yeah, do have, fun. You have fun. And but he's like, what's he's he's like, he, you know, just kept asking about not drinking, but he would say it very loudly. And then he's like, well, then he goes, so you don't drink? He goes, what? Hey, he goes, hey. Then he whisk, get close to me, and he'd whisper, and he'd go, hey, let me tweet me and you. You not you don't drink? And he'd whisper, and I'm like, well, you just yelled it. You just yelled it out loud, <laughs> like yeah. So we just it was all the whole. It was so funny, just all yo. You see, you, you sober? Are you? Hey, come here real fast. Hey, can I talk to you? Between me and you, are you sober? I'm like, you just said it. You're just yelling it to the so room. So loud. Yeah. You just yelled it. And now, hey, come here. Two seconds. Can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> hey, between me and you. <laughs> I just like. <laughs> uh, but it was, yeah, it was all, it was all, it was amazing. The Chicago theater is just, it's huge. The Chicago for- sports fans boo you when you came out? No, because I said they didn't. No, no. Get him. No. Uh, uh, they didn't. Uh, everything was, yeah, it was cool. I mean, I, the first show I walked out, I said I started there in Chicago, and I feel like nobody really, <laughs> they didn't care. yeah, like it was uh, on the on the first show, like it was, and it was funny because I was like, you know, I don't, because you, sometimes you're like, I don't know if people know, mm-hmm. you think they know, like they know, like I don't know, it's like they, they I don't know if they put it together. I always thought they do, but uh, and then it's, but then so it's like I said it first, but I don't, I could have said it weird too though. I don't know. They probably didn't get what you were saying. Yeah, like I think I said it yeah. kind of, but it was like I said it and everybody's like, and you're like, Ugh. and then you just get in your act. He came out and he was like, I used to live here and then I got successful. Yeah. And I left town. And then they ended like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't, yeah, that's what I tell them. No, they're, uh, left you losers. I love Chicago. Chicago's the best. It's a fun, fun town. Uh, yeah, where are we all? Uh, I was Roanoke. in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and yeah. then and then Roanoke at the yeah. Berglund the- Theater, which I'd done with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were just there, right? Was that recently? You did it with Nate? No, that no. was a while ago, a couple years ago. Okay, I was in Dubuque, Iowa, the comedy bar there. Perfect room. It's in a basement, low ceiling. It was small. Second show, they had to add some seats. It was pretty oh. cool. Oh, yeah. A lot of folks came out. A couple drove from like Minnesota wow. to come watch it. Pretty cool, man. Yeah. Um, so I had a great weekend there. That's cool. With my buddy Joe Kelly. Yeah. Uh, Dubuque was uh, Mike Vecchione. We were doing a sound check in uh, Davenport. Uh-huh. And Vecchione was like, uh, he was just on the microphone just saying like, uh, what's up, Iowa City? Like just, like, just <laughs> not saying the right city, but yeah. it was like just kind of making a joke. And he goes, Dubuque, what's up, Dubuque? And, the, and then the sound guy got pretty mad at him. For calling it the wrong city? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Called him, uh, used some words. Uh, that we went. <laughs> and it got real weird. I mean, it was just us in there. And then yeah. it got real, uh, we were like, oh. And then, <laughs> and then it was pretty great. I called it the wrong theater from the stage. Oh, yeah? I, yeah. I was like. That's why we don't list openers. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> the opener has the audacity not to know you're too busy <laughs> to go, where are we? Does it matter? Yeah. I had the right city. I just called it the, the theater the wrong name. And yeah. then uh, they immediately, I could just tell by the look on people's face, like, what? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, wait. And the, I said the theater from the night before. Yeah. So then I corrected it on stage. but Make them feel special. <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, that's they. So even as the opener, they're like, we don't even. He doesn't even. He doesn't care if he's not bringing it. 
And if he doesn't care, <laughs> I mean, I, Leanne might come out in a recliner <laughs> and just press play on her, on her, on her CD and just, but y'all can just listen to this. Just a yeah. sit down comedian. That's sit down comedian. Is. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. She's a sit down comedian. Uh, yeah. It's, it, sometimes you do, you got to remember where you're at. But I mean, that's sometimes you like, just don't say it. I usually don't. It was a brand new theater and I wanted to compliment how nice it was. And then I called it the wrong you thing. You can just say it's a very nice place. <laughs> Well, I yeah, could have, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. their whole name. You had to do their whole name. For a while there, John, when I was opening for John Chris at some of these theaters, he had a little screen on stage with the name. of He, he said, put the name of the city up so yeah. I could see it. And people from the crowd would see it. They'd be like, you couldn't even remember what city we're in? Yeah. Be like, it's it's pretty easy to forget in the moment. Yeah. I think if you're on a crazy run or something. When you're on a crazy run and you're in a different place every night, it, it definitely does happen where you then, you could then be like, where am I? Like, you won't remember where you were. I mean, I this weekend, I was like, where was I? was, you know, and then you, because you just, it's, it, you're gone. I'm, I'm leaving, you know, this is Monday. I'm leaving tomorrow for Wichita Wednesday. Like, so, uh, it's, it's, which you're in Wichita. If you're watching this, uh, the, the day this comes out, I'm in Wichita, ten, I think, I think Wednesday night, Thursday night. Uh, but it's, you know, yeah, it is hard to remember like the run that you're on and like where it's city and stuff like that. And there's been times I've almost said, all right, thank you to whoever the city. And then sometimes you could be like, uh, I mean, I just won't say it if I'm like, if I kind of like question a little yeah, bit not in, my, sure. <laughs> in my head. Uh, but I mean, overall you kind of know, but you know, but I definitely get how it can happen. Yeah. You know. If you're at a comedy club, you do it. That's not good. You're there all weekend. <laughs> the last the logo's right behind yeah, you. Yeah. Where are we at? Charlotte Comedy Zone. Oh. I've been here four days. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long four days. Uh, yeah. So, is well, we're out there. We're touring around. Uh, you went to the uh, Field of Dreams. I did. Mm, yeah. I figured, when am I going to be this close ever again to the, the Field of Dreams? It's in Dyersburg, Iowa. How close were you? <coughs> Not 30 minutes away. Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to be this close ever again. Probably. Yeah. I mean, unless I'm back in Dubuque or something. Because there's, it's just, it's a nothing little, I mean, not a nothing, but it's farms out there. It's yeah. a rural area. So we yeah. drove out and it feels like negative four degrees. And I'm thinking, oh, there'll be some snow on the ground, but, you know, it'd be cool to see the corn and see the field. And then there's just, here's the picture of what the Field of Dreams looks like right now. It's just, oh, wow. it's just, I, I didn't know that corn went away. Oh, it does go away. The whole thing. I thought maybe the corn went away. But not the stalks? Yeah, like in an, like an apple tree. Like the apples yeah. go away, but the tree is still there. Wow. It's all gone. It's just flat snow. We pulled up and there's a big sign that says close for the season. And Joe, who I was with, was like, what are they going to do? They're just going to tell us to leave. So we just went. We don't play catch on the Field of Dreams for for a little bit. It's pretty cool. And so, like, behind the poles would be where the corn would be. Yeah, right around. You can see, yeah, the, those poles right there. That's kind of the out the outfield line. Yeah. And, they're, and any other time of year, <laughs> there'd be corn stalks out there, and you'd get the full effect of it. But it was just snow, like a foot of snow. Yeah. And we're just wading through it. But pretty cool. And you can see in the background, that's where they built that MLB stadium where they played the game last year. Yeah. You can't access it now because it's just snow out there. But all the and all the corn's gone out there too. <laughs> yeah, there's just nothing out there. Does corn grow that quick? I guess so. That's it what I was to. thinking, because Sonny said that they were going to play there this year. Yeah. So I mean the lockout ends. So they guess they got to plant it and just comes up. Yeah, and I guess in the spring it'll it'll be up. Yeah. You know, it must grow. But it must quick. be a second half of the season game, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's in August, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I felt so dumb. I thought there'd be, I was able to take a video of me walking through the corn. Yeah. And it's just flat out there with all the snow. Yeah. I, that's something you would say. And then people would be like, well, they would think you're dumb for not knowing that. You for know? sure. Yeah. Well, like, Why did you go out there? <laughs> that's why sometimes maybe it is good to ask, you know? We'll ask the, the host who was with us. I go, we're going to go to the Field of Dreams. He's like, really? Oh, yeah. You go, yeah, we'll go check it out. He's like, all right, y'all have fun. Yeah. I was like, you can come with if you want. He's like, I think I'm good, man. Yeah. He just hung back There's and watched no, the game. He knew there was no corn. Yeah, he's from there. He's like, yeah. He understands. Yeah. I had no idea. You would have still gone, though, anyway, right? Yeah, I think so. Because I'm, 
Uh, I wanted to check it out. I guess if it's 30 minutes away, but I guess, yeah, but if you do go and there's no corn, there is no, you might as well just drive to any baseball field in on the earth and it would be the same experience. That house is there, right? The house is there. Yeah, the house is right there around the corner. You didn't take a picture of that? All right. Uh, there's no picture of the house. No. What? You get, you took a picture of nothing. I thought that picture of you sitting on the yeah, bleachers. Yeah, I have a picture of me in front of those bleachers, but uh, that was all closed off. You can you can rent that out as an Airbnb. Oh, really? For like seven hundred bucks. You can rent and the you house. can stay there, and then can you you have access to the field? You can also buy exclusive access to the field. Yeah. As as, as for an additional cost. So here's a picture of me on those bleachers. Okay. Where James Earl go. Jones delivered yeah. his famous speech. Does someone and, live there? I don't or think somebody it. lives in there full time, but it's kind of a museum now. Yeah. Where you can pay for a tour, but for like seven hundred bucks, you can rent it out and stay in there for a night, and then go play, and then go play on the field. That'd be fun. That would be pretty cool. It'd be fun to like do it with like wooden bats, and you know, yeah. so you hear that sound, and you oh, go yeah. play some, yeah, and just play baseball all day. Go out there and play a bunch of games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. What would you if you could go to any movie set? Would it be Scream? Yeah, you can go rent that. Scream 4 is coming out, which I'm pretty pumped out. Mm-hmm. Or it's out. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. Is it about called it. Scream 4? I don't know, but it's called Scream. I think it's just called Scream. And I don't get yeah. that because there's already, like, how do you distinguish the two? Yeah, it's been long enough. Yeah. The, the new one. one. The new one. That's what you call it. I'm very excited about it. Uh, that's new. I'll watch that. See but, how that goes. But you would see The Matrix. I didn't. And it just. <laughs> but I mean, why didn't you go see Scream? Uh, we didn't go see Matrix. I saw Matrix when it came out. Oh, I thought you meant this. No, no, we went, me, my buddy Kenny and Travis, and we went, and it was like at 1030 at night. And uh, we yeah, went, that's pretty and, late. Uh, it was like a, it's not in the lateness, but it was like, you know, I was kind of like, all right, yeah, I'll go see it. Like, you know, I, I went through and watched them all. Mm. And then I just, which I, people I don't think like this Matrix, but uh, I didn't, uh, you know, but I was like, I don't know. I could go watch it now, and I'll be like, yeah, I don't remember. It's on HBO Max. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to, but I could. <laughs> yeah. But the Scream, I could go watch Scream. Yeah, I'm excited about Scream. Uh-huh. And that's new. Yeah. That's something. What was what would yours be, Brian? You can go to a set. Psycho, Norman Bates. I don't know. <laughs> I, me, me would be more TV. Like I'd like to go to where Breaking Bad, like that Los Polos, the restaurant. And somewhere. I've been. I've done all that. You have. When I did, uh, you can do your own tour when you go out there, New Mexico. You can put it on your phone and you just drive to the spots. I drove up to uh, Walter White's house. Like you see it, I mean, there's a lady sitting out front. I parked like where, uh, <laughs> where what's his face would park and watch the house. Oh, Mike, you know, Mike. Yeah, yeah. we park all the way up there. You kind of stop there because the, there's a lady sitting out there, and they they don't like it. Mm-hmm. And it's like there's they have a big fence. They put like I mean I think these people will like regret. I don't know if they regret it, yeah. but maybe yeah. close. If they if they probably regret it. The people, they were like, when they were doing it, people, they they throw pizzas up there on there, on her house and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. And then they had to put, she has like a fence. They She was sitting in her dry, in her yard, staring. And I mean, when I, and then enough that made me uncomfortable that I didn't like. You didn't get any closer to it? No. I took a picture, but it was like kind of, I, I, I think I did it from far away. And then maybe when I drove, I made a left <laughs> and drove by. Because it was. You know, like, I mean, she's just sitting there and they're staring at you and they're not, you know, they're not happy. Yeah. And so, uh, but I saw that. I saw Pinkman's house. And then you can, but you can just go. I think they were shooting Better Call. They were shooting something there. Mm. Uh, but you can kind of just go and like, it just, you can look at Google Maps. And there's a way to put it up. And it puts like where, I mean, every scene from Breaking Bad, you just kind of drive to each one where they went to. Is that restaurant a real place that you can go eat? Uh, the... Uh, you know the Sal's his law his law thing Saul Saul his uh his law where he his office yeah that's a bar, uh. but they they have the door from the uh from Breaking Bad huh so uh let's yeah did I go I don't know if I went there and ate I did, is that real it's not a real restaurant no, no but the it's yeah Twisters this is this is what I've, it's uh it's some yeah. other oh uh, yeah there's the building yeah I don't think I saw that but. You see, like the house. I drove by the house where that girl dies uh, with Jesse Pinkman. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Their apartment, yeah, that there. apartment. You drive, I drove by that. Uh, so I did. The, yeah, the 
uh, the downtown or, you know, where they're going to meet at the Civic Center. Like that oh, stuff's yeah. like right down the middle open, but you go down there and see that. Yeah, it was coming. Mean, it, it was, that's cool. That, that one actually was, I really liked. And it was funny as you put, you can show up on your Google Maps and it ended up staying on there forever. I don't know why, but it was like, it like just stayed there. So like anytime I was like be Googling something, like if you zoomed out, you could always see like, I would have like the locations of all that on there. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, you hit save on them. By yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went, there was, a, there was this old radio guy named Man, Man Cow. You ever heard oh, of sure, I have. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't. He's not old. I don't know. He might, but he was, uh, he was in Chicago actually, and he, and so I went on Mancow, and supposedly like, people would have trouble going on Mancow. Like there's, there's a lot of issues with comics going on, mm -hmm. and he would just talk. And he's very fast. I remember the first time I did it, he talks to you. You're like I was about to call into the radio show, and uh, this was years ago, and he'll just be talking like this, like you know, he'll be like, yeah, we went over there, you know, he's like. I don't know. He's like, it's been Chicago. It's snowing everywhere. Got a neighbor. Got to see on the phone. Hey, you doing stand up comedy? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it. I've been. We're over at Zany Z. He goes, all right, then we're good. All right, back off. And then you just would be <laughs> off the air, and you're like, what happened? You don't even know what happened. Uh -huh. And so I went in, and I was talking to him, and it was right after I did this, did that tour, and like, so I think doing when you do Man Cow's show, it's like you gotta like, if you're trying to like get in with this guy, so because it can go, if you don't get along with him. And if it, if it gets wrong, like I think Patrice, uh, maybe Bill Burr got in a fight with this guy or Patrice got in a fight. There would be like, there was comics, some comics would be go great. Some comics would actually get in some pretty big fights with them. And then, but I brought up the Breaking Bad thing and he like loved Breaking Bad. And then we just talked about that. And there you struck up a relationship from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I haven't done a show. I don't know what he's doing now. Uh, he might, yeah. But yeah, it was, uh, but I remember that. It was right after I went. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I went to Breaking Bad. And then he liked that. So he just kept asking me questions yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. Where's he based out of? Chicago. He was in Chicago. Uh, okay. And then, so I don't know if he's, if he's gone or if he's still there, you know, whatnot. I did an interview uh, this week. Not quite man cow. Big Joe on the go. Oh, yeah. Local guy. Yeah. And uh, Ruth had to go to the ER in the middle of the night. Her blood pressure skyrocketed. We were pretty concerned. We would go to the ER. She's fine. Everything's, everything's good. But we were still there when I had to go do the hit. So... I went outside. The yeah, what's the – who calls it the hit? Is that a TV term? Yeah, I don't like it. I don't think I <laughs> – I've heard it more now. I think I know it from working in television. That's just Yeah, what, what is it? It's just the time you're on. We you called you, it the hit. We hit you at 7.52. So you say I had to go do the hit. It's, it's, it's very inside. I've seen people on Twitter doing it and stuff, and it's very inside. But I don't know what it is. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't care. For you said it. it's so casual. Yeah. just now it's like it's. I think it's like the casualness of people, the way people say it. Yeah, and it's a very. It's people on TV. They go, you see this hit, and you're like, what are you? It just sounds arrogant. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, I've heard hit piece. Like you know, someone writes a hit. Yeah, that's like a mean piece. Yeah, but then go do yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I had to go do the interview. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um. <laughs> and I had to go to the parking lot of the hospital and do it. And there's just construction workers drilling behind me. And <laughs> I mean, this is, it's not just radio. It's like streaming service. And then Ruth being discharged. So you're on. I'm on. Like, yeah. you can watch me. And yeah. I see Ruth being discharged, walking out. And uh, it was you just. You the video of it? Yeah. I mean, there is video of it. Um, that's not it. No, yeah. No. yeah your interview? The, uh -huh. Does she get in the car? You see a really quick just get yeah. in the car behind me. Yeah, on there. It's uh, mornings on Main Street. I think it's yeah. what it is. If you want to pull it up, but it's uh, it was just so funny and just the craziness of it all. And then she just sat in the car till I finished it. Yeah, I had a tag. I don't think you can see it. It said visitor triage <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I was wearing while I was doing it. Yeah, but what's triage sounds so bad. I know triage. What does triage mean? I don't know. I just, Three. It's third time here. <laughs> I hear triage, I think, like uh, in a battle. Yeah. Yeah. And you're wrapping up a wound. Yeah. It sounds that immediate, yeah. that much. If you're like, oh, I went to the triage, you're like, oh, my God. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Now I got an ant bite. Yeah. So then a few hours later, we go to our weekly doctor's visit with uh, the high-risk doctor that we go to and we always sit at the same place a lot of specialists in your life like <laughs> it's like i like that was my third visit. also yeah. went, earlier I, before that i went to the sleep doctor yeah i like every doctor you go to you're like 
He's it's it's a, like he's like I specialize in. <laughs> it's <laughs> you walk in. It's I mean you're like the it's the VIP. Uh huh. You would be going to all the VIP areas of doctors where it's like this guy's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the sleep doctor. We had to drive separately because I had to go to that one first. I was the only person in there under 70, but uh, it's time for my checkup for my CPAP. And I was like, mm-hmm. Aaron feels great when he wears his. Tristan, everybody says they yeah. feel great. I still tired when I wear mine, so I got to do a new Does sleep Does everybody stuff. want to talk about they're wearing it? They might, <laughs> I mean, there's ever... the only one here who does it. I know, but I just, I don't know if, if everybody was like, just oh, like openly sorry, like, yeah. Openly like, yeah, I hope to, you know, I, I, just I think they you. assumed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd guarantee you he didn't want to ever bring up that he sleeps with sleep. We've talked about it before. I, mean. I don't know. Have we? Remember we were talking about CPAP being casually, Chris Brown's you know. opener with Shay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was, we were making fun of it. It'd been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Him didn't sleep CPAP machine. Just he a, talks about it, but just to bring in everybody else, is kind of <laughs> like, he goes, you know what I'm talking about, Aaron. You sleep with one, right? You have a big problem with that. Uh, I just thought people assumed he did. Yeah. yeah. So then we get to this high-risk doctor uh, place and there's police cars there. I'm like, what's going on? And a car had ran into the building, crashed into the building, into the corner where we sit every week when we go. So if we were there just a few minutes earlier, there's the outside of it um, where it crashed, and that's the corner we always Man. go to. <laughs> and uh, and then I think the other one's where we sit inside, right over there in that corner. That's like your spot. That's our spot. We always go over there because of COVID. We get over there just where it's safe, and then. Not anymore. God. They said it was like a bomb went off in there. Oh, man. Was there a mural of Nate on the other side? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Did uh, y'all go switch seats now? Yeah, we have no choice. <laughs> Do you think you're a stay, you know? Like when they get it fixed, I'll go back think, over there? Well, then they'll put chairs back over there. Yeah. Well, I'll go back? Yeah, like would they just leave it and go, let's just do a table over there now? You know, it's kind of like... Did the person say why they drew it? Like they just... I think it was a kid. I mean, two people got hurt. Oh. They had to take them to the hospital. I think they're They fine. didn't go to the triage? <laughs> Were y'all not at the triage? No, this is different. Oh, this, is, this is different. This is doctor's appointment number three. Oh, yeah. See, this is the, the problem with specialists. They got hurt in a doctor's waiting yeah. room, and they had to go somewhere else. Yeah. He goes, I don't do this. Yeah. I can do a lot. Not this. I do, not ba- even a I do lot, babies, really. but not, hum- but not yeah. adults. Yeah. So, But they did get transported. I think they're fine, but they took them to the hospital. Wow. Wow. There's somebody that hit the gas, I think, instead of the brake. See, this is yeah. something you can't think about. If I, if I, every time you go to a restaurant or somewhere public where you have to sit down, you can't think someone can drive a car through here because that's pretty much everywhere. Yeah. I mean, that could happen everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Well, you always think, what are the odds? And your odds just got higher because we now know someone <laughs> that sits in those two chairs. <laughs> And we were all sitting in the green room. If that tr- that dump truck, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. two places that we two places that we can, we have. There's ties to if if someone's talk going like I gotta if we walk into a room and they're going, oh, we're just selling, we're telling, you know, cars driving through wall stories. It's crazy that we can be like, well, I'll wait, I'll wait my turn. I should be. <laughs> yeah. I, most people should be like, I got nothing. <laughs> And we're like, all oh, right, I got a couple I could tell Here's you. my first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah here's my when first it comes one. back around, I'll tell yeah. you the second one. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh yeah, that's crazy. Yep. That's fun though. It's probably the most excitement they've seen there in a while. Uh <clears throat> <laughs> yep. I would imagine, you know, don't don't you think they get it, you know, oh, it's like yeah. you're like Phew. Oh yeah, they were all pretty shaken up. And the first thing they do when you walk in is take the pregnant lady's blood pressure. And they said that day they're like, We're not even doing do it. There you go. Why? Because everyone's so stressed. They're like, yeah. I mean, after you get there, they did it. Like they took roost, but they said everyone who was there when it happened, mm-hmm. they're like, we're not going to take your blood pressure. I'm going to need you to answer a question for me, Brian. Don't make fun of me. What is blood pressure? What do you mean? I don't know. That's something you hear. I don't really know what that means. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's how much the blood, the heart's pumping the blood. And I don't know the specifics, but I know what the numbers are. And, 120 over 80 is average. Okay, I knew that, but I don't know what that means. So when you just said they don't even bother checking the blood pressure because everyone's stressed out. Because your heart would be pumping a lot more. You'd yeah, be like so it'd be adrenaline. like, it would be like really high, the, your blood pressure. Okay. Travis, my tour manager, his blood pressure was just, but it's just because he doesn't eat good. But his was so high, he had to Google it, and then Google was like, 
it's not good. You know, like I mean, the, the internet was like, I don't. You should. You don't need to be here. Yeah. You need to be talking to someone. Go to a specialist. Yeah, go to a specialist. Yeah, Ruth has to take hers every morning, every night, and keep track of it to make sure it's not going. I too think high. Ruth okay. appreciates too getting uh, told all her information <laughs> on everywhere. You just blab out. You know, she didn't care, huh? Yeah. We're sharing. That's what we do. We we are sharing, but there's just some. I mean, you could just say. I just, I don't even know the point of the story to say that Ruth has to take it every. Like I don't even know what it helps. I'm trying to explain to him about blood pressure and how it's important. But I don't think you have to go. You know, for instance, my wife uh, <laughs> on the older side, and uh, she takes it every. Like I just I don't know. There, it's because she's pregnant, huh? Yeah. It's because she's pregnant. Okay. Yeah, I know, but I'm just. It's yeah. just funny. I don't think it. When you just somebody goes, "What's your blood pressure?" Well, let me. I'll just tell a lot of people on a radio <laughs> show about it. Uh, <laughs> So, by the way, Aaron, funny. how's that rash doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, dude. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, you still scared of uh, heights? <laughs> I know you had trouble coming upstairs last week. Is I, that? I am scared of heights. You are? Oh, yeah. Big time. We you drive a roller coaster? I've ridden one before. Only one? I've only done one. Why? I'm scared of them. Yeah? I think it's a pretty rational fear. Yeah. You know? But you don't ever, what would you ride? I rode a wooden roller coaster because I knew it wouldn't have a flip. Yeah. I don't think I'm ready for a flip. Yeah. But I've done one. Company work trip, Holiday World. Oh, in yeah. In Santa Claus, Indiana. I did oh. one roller coaster. Yeah. And you're sitting no more? I, I think I'm done. I don't think I don't need this. You didn't like it. I don't need this in my life. My blood pressure went up so high. It probably did. Yeah, I'm sure it did. Yeah. You don't go up in tall buildings? Uh, if I can avoid it, you know? There's that building in New York. When I was in New York, they got a they got a building that's it's just so tall, and it's I think people live up there, and it gets so skinny, and you're oh it, yeah, it's so tall. It's I mean it's it's bigger than the Empire State Building. Mm -hmm. I, I think I it know. is. Yeah, and you're like I don't I don't know if I could live up there. Like it's the it it's the view you're in that building. It's like I don't know if I could. It's mm -hmm. it's that you know it's like one thing to be. Like if you go up there and see the apartment, and you're like, man, that was kind of crazy. But like to every day, you're trying to go to bed, just watching TV, and you're like, I am a <laughs> hundred and something stories up in the air. Mm -hmm. Like, and the building just gets small. Like you, <laughs> it just seems it seems crazy. Yeah, we're not supposed to be up there. And they're like the views are the you know you're like I don't are the views even you're above everything. It would already be cloudy up there because you couldn't see. I don't know. It'd be interesting. Yeah. It's too high to have a good view. It's like a yeah. certain point is I need to lower it down to get a better Canyon. view. Well, you just wake up in bed. You just would see, I don't know, maybe that's a great view. You don't see buildings. You just see nothing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you're, you're just so high. Maybe, you know. Mm. I've stayed in hotels where you're on a high floor and you're like, eh, it's a little. Oh, yeah. Like your balcony, you're like, I don't love it. Mm -hmm. Not loving it. I just stayed at one in Phoenix recently, pretty high up. Maybe like the 17th or 18th floor. Not yeah. crazy high, but high. Yeah. And the elevator was a clear elevator facing outside. Sheridan. Was it a Sheridan? No. It was they a, usually do. No, it was a, I don't remember. But it was, you were just looking and it was pretty scary, dude. I, yeah. I just, I looked the other way. Yeah. You know? I did that, Will, the Willis Tower in Chicago where you walk out on the glass. I couldn't do it. I couldn't make my <laughs> legs go out there. Yeah. On it, yeah. It just I like, but was, you went up there to do it, the, yeah. And I like couldn't make my legs go; they just refused. <laughs> and you just turned around, yeah. I just looked at it like that. I think I maybe put one foot on it, yeah. <laughs> and the people behind you, were the people waiting to go, yeah. I had to yeah. water my plant first, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go out there, you go. Up. They kicked me, <laughs> they kicked you yeah. up there. <laughs> Get out there. Even though it's wet and cold in most parts of the country, running will still be a part of people's lives. The Wool Dasher Mizzle, the weather repellent performance running shoe, is the first shoe of its kind. It is sustainable, made from natural materials with low environmental impact on the planet. Is this what I have on? Yeah, that's what you got. Like I have. Let's it get on. a look here. Yeah, there you go. They're great shoes. Yeah, I had a pair of. Uh, I've I've got another pair of all all birds that I bought like three years ago that I've just had uh, for. I mean, way before this, obviously, and I just wore them because you, I got socks on today, but you don't have to wear socks. Mm. And I always love that. And I, I use them as I just slip them on. They're like perfect to go run around in. Like uh, when you're just running out and like 
that's what you're wearing shoes basically the whole time anyway. Mm -hmm. And I would just slip them on and off super easy. I've had these on today. They're super comfortable. They look good. What size yeah. is that? Uh, nine and a half. Mm. Yeah. It's hard to stay motivated with winter weather, but if your feet are warm and dry, then it is way easier. Don't let winter storms put a damper on your run. Grab a pair of the weather repellent wool dasher missiles from Allbirds. Yeah, it's like super warm. That's crazy. That they're going to in the weather repellent. That's pretty wild because it's plastic on the inside. Like it's like you can mm -hmm. feel. Because I was like, how's that going to be? And then now I see. Yeah. Huh. A huh. good pair of running, it'll make me want to run. Uh. <laughs> you won't do it, but it'll make you want to. Oh, listen. The idea. It's like if you if you have a clean desk and a and a new pen and a blank piece of paper, yeah. you want to write. Yeah. If a good pair of running shoes, yep. Yep. new shoes. These are very comfortable shoes. I mean, yeah. They I want to I'm gonna run home, I think. Yeah. This winter, keep your feet cozy and dry with the Allbirds wool dasher and missiles. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A L A L L B I R D S dot com. Okay. So we have a new ad, Three Day Blinds. Three and, Day Blinds. Yeah, Three Day Blinds. So we have had paper shades on our windows for an embarrassing amount of time. So finally, I heard about Three Day Blinds, and Jerry came and did a consultation, and it was super easy. She brings everything to you. You can look at it, like, on your window. You can have everything she has. They design and measure and install. And so if you have questions about your windows, like, you know, I have this oval window that I want to put blinds in. How does that work? She can do everything. So you can choose from thousands of options. They have any budget and style. So we placed the order. It was like a week and a half. They come and install it. it took 15 minutes. It was super easy. Totally awesome. And how we got to take the paper shades down. We had just paper shades forever. Paper shades. Like, and they would, you have to like clip them with the you know, something to make them stay up yeah. forever. Now we got real deal. Real deal. Super easy. I should have done it millions of years ago. And right now you can get three-day blinds, buy one, get one 50% off deal on custom blinds, shades, and drapery for free, no charge, obligation consultation. Just head to threedayblinds.com slash Nate and use our code Nate. That's right. Buy one, get one 50% off when you head to threedayblinds.com slash Nate and use our promo code Nate. One last time, that's the number 3dayblinds.com slash Nate. Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Mizzen and Maine. Wearing a dress shirt sounds good, but it's not fun when the dress shirts are stiff. They make you sweat. They wrinkle easily. Sometimes it's just a nightmare to dress nicely. This is it. And we this, have it. We have it right here. Most guys dread wearing a dress shirt. Not anymore. You need to check out Mizzen and Maine. They have the comfort and the flexibility of your favorite athletic wear. So it's going to feel like a, a golf Athlete, shirt or yeah, any yeah. of the stuff. That, you can wash it normal. You don't have to be weird about it. Yeah. That's the best part. You don't have to, you know. You don't have to take it to the it. dry cleaner. You can wash it instead of having, yeah, it mm -hmm. being like a whole thing fits. Right. It's comfortable. It's that stretchy. Stretchy is the new way to go with oh everything. It God. makes you want to wear stuff. I actually had this on earlier. Uh, and I was wearing it, and I wore this Titan shirt just because the Titans are uh, going to be in the playoffs. But it's this shirt, this uh, hoodie, because they're doing hoodies too. Feels yeah. unreal. They Very have flannels, no tuck shirts, performance polos, chinos, and more. Uh, modern tailoring is going to fit. It's going to look nice, and it's moisture wicking, which means I'm going to stay nice and dry. And I have a big problem with sweating through nice shirts. Oh, there you go. There you you know, so with over 30,000 five-star reviews, you know they make a great product. It feels like a golf shirt. If you're heading to the Waste Management Open in early February, keep an eye out for their on-site shop. I oh. think Phil Mickelson wore one of these shirts in a tournament recently. You got J.J. Watts wearing their stuff, too. It's uh, it's the real deal. It's good stuff. So whether you're working from the golf course or taking conference calls in the courtyard, we got good news. Go to mizzenandmain.com. Use promo code NATE. You get $35 off any regular price order of $125 or more. That's $35 off when you go to Mizzen and Main, M I Z Z E N A N D M A I N dot com, and use our promo code NATE. Everyone is looking for a fresh start in 2022. It's been a couple of frustrating years. Talkspace gives you personally matched therapists so you can talk to a professional instead of your friends. Oh, that's good. With comedians as friends, yeah. you might get the worst advice or the best advice ever. Probably. I think comedians are good advice, but I think it's good to talk to <laughs> a professional. You need to go talk to a professional that goes, hey, he said this, and then they can be like, that was dumb uh -huh. that he said that. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah get it checked by a real person. Get therapist. it checked by a real person. <laughs> but I think ta- I think talking is a, it's a great thing. Be safe by getting advice from a licensed professional that will be way more helpful. Over 50% of Americans struggle with their mental health. If you're looking for someone to talk to, you're going to love Talkspace. They make it so easy and schedule live video sessions all from the comfort of your device. You can start messaging your therapist the same day you sign up. At Talkspace, your privacy and security are their number one priority. The app puts you in a private room with just you and your therapist. Send messages 24-7 and get replies throughout the day. No need to wait for a weekly appointment. Talkspace encryption and added security features keeps your conversation fully protected. Talkspace therapists are experts in dozens of specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more, to help you start feeling better. Make mental health part of your daily routine with Talkspace. Visit Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month when you use promo code NATE at sign up. That is $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code NATE. What, uh, so let's do, so we're, uh, we started this year. We have, we have a, like a somewhat different formula, uh, that we're thinking about doing this podcast. So I, I, I got kind of towards the end of it. We were talking about topics and stuff. You know, we always had topics, but I, I kind of was like, I don't know. The universal one was kind of like, what are we doing? Like, you know, we have a whole, (laughs) and I thought we still could talk about, I still like talking about topics. But it's like we could. It doesn't have to be like the whole episode, you know, because we always end up talking about a lot of stuff. Yeah. So it's like making it more like that. I mean, I think this one's, you know, there's been moments of this one where it's felt like it's almost died. <laughs> what moments were those? I mean, multiple. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At one point, I just watching both y'all just talk about like it's like two old women at the grocery store, like, yeah, yeah, my son got back from. <laughs> Vietnam, <laughs> and then you're like, like that was 80 years ago, you know. And then he's, she has no idea. <laughs> she has, she does. She was the one in Vietnam. She doesn't even know. That's what it felt like watching the all Okay, it's just, it's just high level doctor after high level. Like, yeah. Every doctor visit, just you have the world falling apart. Right. We're hearing from Bates. <laughs> He's got a lot of problems. He does. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm figuring it out, dude. He's lost all that weight. And yeah, you still have to do sleep. Why do you have to do a sleep app machine? Does everybody have to do it? Mm-hmm. You'll have to do it soon. No. No, not everybody. Do, well, let's, can, do you, you ever feel bad in the morning? Like, I don't I don't Like, what do you mean? Like, sometimes you wake up sore throat. Sometimes you wake up out of breath. Do you ever wake up with a headache? No. Do you ever feel like you didn't get sleep? Hmm. No, you're fine. I don't. I mean, may, like you know, if I don't sleep, like last time on the bus, uh, I think so. I don't think all the time, but I think I have a little bit more than I used to. Okay, so it doesn't sound like it's a problem. Yeah, it's but, not like everybody's talking about how much you're snoring. No. Okay, then I think you're fine. Yeah, it was a thing with me. It was embarrassing. Yeah, it was people in other rooms would hear it. Oh yeah, snoring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. real problem. Yeah. That's when I knew I should probably get that checked out. And you have to bring it everywhere. I bring it everywhere. Even so, in a hotel, could people hear you in another room? If I was snoring, yeah. yes, mm. yeah. I did a, a road trip with a uh, comedian friend, and he heard it in the other room. That's how yeah. I, he was, different floors. <laughs> it's a different hotel. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was loud. Yeah, and I and it, I have to share a room with somebody. You have to explain to them. You know, hey, this is going to be an hey. issue. I'm sorry. You sit down on the bed across from them, and you go, hey. <laughs> I just, let me talk to you real fast. And you already get those double, you get those double beds and they're sitting there. And then you just sit down and you're like, hey. And they're like, hey, man, it gets weird. <laughs> I didn't, I should have told you before you committed to this, but it's going to be a nightmare tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, essentially. And the embarrassment of breaking out a CPAP machine is so much less than what the snoring was. Yeah. I go, I don't even care. This is better for everybody. Google. I mean, you do that like goggle tightening where you go, <laughs> like it just, you know, how like you just you, you tighten them up. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. Up, you shove off. I'm not even embarrassed about it. I'm proud of it. Huh? You're proud of it. I wear it nice and proud. Yeah. Well, I'm not, yeah, there's, I'm not saying there's anything to be embarrassed about it. You talk about it a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's my child. Yeah. 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 <laughs> my little pappy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I have no problem. You know, it's just, I don't know. I used to take it on the road some with you. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but then once we, I mean, you're, you bring it on the bus, you're diehard. <laughs> yeah. It's not like I just love using yeah. it. Yeah. I need to use it. You should be using Aaron, it too. You're a big guy. You have to do it more than most. Aaron, go ahead with the answer to that. <laughs> you, you should be die. doing it on those, man. Well. I mean, do you feel different when you don't use it? No, that's the thing. That's why I went. Oh, to, 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 okay. To Maybe I don't need this anymore. What's well, or why isn't it working? Oh, so you just feel bad always? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still wake up tired. You need a little CPAP life machine, like just <laughs> need a tube. You need yeah. the incubation. You just need to walk around with just <laughs> I, you well, those oxygen tanks. <laughs> You're gonna just have one of those <laughs> bubble boy. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Just, I mean, once in a lifetime doctor after once in a lifetime doctor, like it's a guy <laughs> that's like, are you the guy that just does this one thing? Yeah, we're all going in to see breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you well, are that specialist of a doctor. It's like, do you go, do you start out going to that? You're like, I want to be this one of a thing, or you kind of just, just lead you that way. And you're like, I'm just a, you know. I don't know. I don't think you pick a specialty right away, right? I mean, you take regular medical school yeah and then you branch Gear off, off into mm-hmm. like the real the real stuff the real stuff right you're not just a triage guy yeah so we were uh so we we're talking about like uh doing this. this is the first one we're kind of doing it this way so then we just have some random topics and stuff so you know just trying to talk about some random stuff we'll see i think we still have i think we still have topics to talk yeah. about too oh, yeah. but it's like just i don't know just you know seeing what happens all right, you know. Yeah. So what's what? Uh, well, we have one video of uh, what do you have? The, you have the video of the kid uh, from the. This was a from last year during the meet and greet. I had uh, it was cool to meet this kid. He could he any episode you could just uh, you could tell him pick a number and he could tell you what it was. It's pretty really? impressive. Yeah. You want to play it? Eli. 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 Yeah, y'all can so, all. So. So Eli listens to the podcast every night, and he's seen multiple or listened to them multiple times. So if you ask him the number of the episode, he can give you the topic, and if you tell him the topic, he can give you the number. So for example, what's number two? Uh, it's called the second episode. I didn't make topics. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's yeah. number sixteen? Sixteen is hoaxes. Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania sixty-nine. Oh man. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> So he would just do it. I mean, he could do anything, and which we could be messing him up now that we're doing. I know. Yes. Yeah, we're making his life a lot harder. He's like, now. Oh, great. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I go do it. We might be back to topics. I don't, you know. I mean, after feeling how this one's going, I don't know if I, <laughs> this one's been. We haven't even started yet. I know, we haven't even got started. It's just been a lot of like, uh, so what's uh, how's it going? My son's been out today. <laughs> Snowed a lot. <laughs> Talked about CPAP machines. I mean, just. <laughs> that's gonna be one of the parts of the title cpap machines yeah not really uh when do they invent cpap machines i think it's what is it to help you breathe regularly. yeah it keeps um uh, you have to sleep on your back mm-hmm. i mean it certainly helps you can't sleep on your 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 front that's you for can't sure. sleep on your side i sleep on my side yeah you can sleep on your side you can't though. sleep face down yeah, that's for sure yeah you can't get air for anything yeah. and you just picture like uh, 1980 and got invented yeah so f- first few years of brian's life were pretty rough <laughs> so, i mean like there so like there's no when you do it is there going to be is there a cure no no so you're just born of this or not born of this no 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 well i mean you could lose weight and that could help oh there we go so there is a cure i thought you meant like does the machine cure you no but i mean is there a, like how do you if you're like I don't want to. So I found that as I lost weight, the effects are with the effects of me not using it are less than they were. Yeah, like I can accidentally fall asleep on the couch or something now, and I my day's not ruined. Yeah, where it used to be. Oh wow, you know. So it's it's a little better, but I think there's it, there's it's weight related. And there's also a genetic component to it. Yeah, like Brian has, and Brian's not in. You know, yeah, I'm in great shape. He's held on by band aids. <laughs> 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 just, just held together yeah oh man so i'm looking at some of these uh, yeah taco bell what do they have so taco bell uh started a membership service ten dollars a month mm. join you can get one free taco a day 
It's my uh, new Planet Fitness. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. You have to, to cancel. You have to go into Taco Bell to <laughs> tell them or mail my letter. So they think this is going to be the new way to fast food restaurants are going to start doing stuff. <clears throat> Just like um, I think McDonald's was the first company to do the extra value meal. Mm-hmm. And now pretty much every fast food has an extra value meal, yeah. right? But once they give it to you. Hmm? McDonald's will give you that big – they give you that big Diet Coke. They want to give it – like it's it's not – you know they're they're handed to you. No, oh, the drinks are all the same price. Yeah, you know, so it doesn't. Yeah, but is it is it cheaper to get extra value meal than if you ordered those three separately? Uh, I don't know. I, I never get a bit extra value meal though. Like I I don't like the the cup. I've even got extra value meal for the extra fries, and then be like, just give me the regular cup though, just because it's like the cup's so big. Oh really? Yeah. I always yeah. say you got the number one. I do. But I'm just saying, I I'll get it just a regular size, number one, and like come with the the meat. I like the medium cup and the yeah. But that's extra value meal, right? Yeah, you're talking about the meal. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm talking about the extra. I guess the the large, large, mm. large. It. I can't even remember a time before meals. McDonald's invented the meal at a fast food place, the like combo, like a combo. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. I don't say like, a Taco Bell. Sure. How's, that doesn't make sense. They're like, well, they did that, so I bet they're, this is going to be the new future. I just got to pay ten. Like, there's no way. So I'm paying ten bucks a month, and I just got to go up there and get one taco. Yeah, that's the complaint about it. Like, who can they just eat, go in there eat one? And you don't. You can order more, but that's why they probably try to get you to come in. They're like, you'll b- buy more while you're there. Yeah, you're not just going <clears> to <throat> wait in line and get one taco. Yeah. But I mean, you, but one taco is not ten bucks, so I don't. There's no way this works. But you go every day. You could. Yeah, you go every day, but I mean, you would only eat one taco. Like you're not. Who's just going to have that one taco for lunch? Right. This would have to be. I know there's got to be some guy that's like, oh, this is unbelievable. Like if it makes total sense for him. If he was mm-hmm. already going to Taco Bell every day. Yeah. He's like, I go every day <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. So here's a description of it. It says, available starting today exclusively on the Taco Bell app. This is from January 6th. So this has been out for a couple weeks now. The Taco Lovers Pass allows fans to redeem one of seven iconic tacos a day for 30 consecutive days at participating U.S. locations, all for the price of $10. So those tacos are, this is what you can get in Crunchy Taco, Taco Supreme. You can get the Doritos Locos Taco, Doritos Locos Taco Supreme. What a supreme deal. What it says right below it. <laughs> My God. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Ten uh, bucks for one of those a day. It doesn't, I don't, I don't it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like if you go, I mean, if you're just running in there, I I guess if I work next to a Taco right. Bell, <clears throat> but I don't uh I don't I don't see the value in it. I don't know. Why would you go in there? It doesn't seem as good like movie pass. You'd have to get like three. Yeah, movie pass like makes sense. Yeah. You'd have to get like three. A month for it to even be like to mm-hmm. break even, probably. Yeah, Movie Pass was literally too good to be true. They had to. I mean, it's no longer around, right? You know, but there are regal passes now and things like that. Right. That if you see two movies a month, I think it more than pays for itself, right? Mm-hmm. I have the AMC thing. I get three a week. Pretty cool. Three free movies a week. Yeah. And how much you pay? I don't know. It's like twenty bucks or something a month. Yeah. That's so pretty that pay, good. The two movies that pays for itself. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's twenty a bucks a month. I, if there were a McDonald, I would join a McDonald's membership. Yeah, I sure. love. Well, I love Taco Bell. I just don't think one taco is, you know, I, I I just would be like, I'll just buy it on my own. A, you have to have a car. Can you imagine? I don't like. Sometimes too, the problem with a lot of this stuff, you do it and you'd like it's going to seem like it's great. I feel like they make you feel bad when you go, when you would do it. I was I about to ask the, the mental hurdle of handing over a yeah. membership card. Yeah. If you're going through flipping through your membership cards, you got Sam's, Costco's, <laughs> Planet. Everybody, well, everyone's got Planet Fitness, and then you got Taco <laughs> Bell. But I always think when this, they kind of offer this stuff, like they don't. It's never a welcoming feeling. If fast food wants to do something like this, you got to be. It's got to be more welcoming. Like it's almost like it. it you feel bad. Mm-hmm. Like it. You know they like it's like almost like they're annoyed that you're not. You're like I got this card, and they're gonna be like. Ugh. And then they got to like go like run it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, because the people who work there don't even want to be there. Yeah, and then you're like, well, I don't even want this court. You're making me feel, yeah. I feel cheap. I feel, that's like you know, and you're that'd be like if you always like we remember getting to hotels on uh, like Expedia or Priceline, and you would do that Priceline thing, and you get there. There's times you'd be like, well, I feel you're making me feel bad that I, I did it like this. Mm-hmm. I know. 
And then you're like, well, I don't even want it. And so then I don't want to do it because I don't want to get, I'm going to get yelled at by somebody, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I did it. I didn't do it the exact right way. Yeah, I didn't wanted. do I'm sorry. I didn't do it the way you wanted me to do it. But I started buying stuff through the website because it was, I just was like, I don't, I felt, you know, I don't, that that could be me though. I don't know if I. I totally get that. If you check in a price line, they're in you know, like, what's your name? I go Weber. And they go, did you book it through something else? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, sorry. Hotel yeah, I found tonight. a guy. You know? Yeah, I found a guy on the road. He <laughs> was selling. selling this room. He rented it and then he yeah. wasn't going to stay in it. Yeah. You know what I would buy if it was part of a membership? Like a TSA pre-check for a fast food place. Mm. An expedited line. Are you going to like a lot of metal detectors? Where <laughs> was your fast food? <laughs> you go to ones that are pretty dicey and you're You made a way to skip the line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I meant to skip the line. Yeah. Well, yeah. they do mobile orders. Oh, okay. Then yeah, that kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. But I'm talking more about spontaneous. Like if you're just on the road. You know, if I'm by Zanies, there's that Chick-fil-A that's always right by Zanies. And I go, I'd like to see what's going on over there. And there's always 800 million cars in line. Mm -hmm. But if there's a pre-check line, swipe a little car you know, and I get to cut all of it. Yeah. I'd pay for that. You think there's a certain weight they they make you? <laughs> like the guys? Who's going to want that? They got to have a van. <laughs> yeah. Your van. I check every box. You check me. every. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, this mobile order, I think, would you know, you're just talking about the spur of the moment if you're hungry, you're like, Yeah, 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 I like yeah. to cut that line, yeah. Taco Bell, that might be worth it if you got like one free meal, yes, that might be worth a day, it. yeah. But that would they would get crushed with that. I mean, that would be pointless. They should be like, And we'll give you free refills, you're like, You already do, though, and you're like, Well. <laughs> So, but we'll do it for you. you don't I don't see how this is the future of fast food. I just don't understand how they, like who over there is just like, you know what? McDonald's came up with the meals, and I think the future is going to be membership. Wait, who said this was the future? Was that you? It was Taco Bell, I think. Oh, okay. I thought you were, you were saying I'm this saying it because I love it so much. Yeah, but they're saying like they're like this is we think's what happens subscription services Taco Bell because everything's a subscription subscription service. Right. right. Nowadays you have like you know you're now you pay five dollars basically for just everything, and you're you're you know you're uh, subscribed to so much stuff. But like you're not gonna, I don't think you're gonna do it. Food, I could see. I'm trying to think like I mean there's like a cafeteria like I said if you could go in there and get a meal. Yeah. And like it was like a college thing where you're like, I don't gotta pay, I just go in there and pick and you put it on my card and like say I'm say I pay whatever I'm allowed this much, you know, a month. Uh-huh. Almost like a uh food allotment. Like you're like, all right, I pay thirty bucks a month at Taco Bell, I'm allowed sixty bucks worth of food. And I go there and use it as much like that would be Oh, that would be better. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Well, this is this is the same premise, it's just theirs is much smaller. It, it, but it's not because it's just saying one taco. Like so, it's like that's enough to make you not do it because you go ten bucks a month. You're like, well, I'm not. I'm gonna go in there and just get one taco. Like I guess, you know, it's it doesn't it doesn't it's not enough reward. Yeah, they need to up it a little bit. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of talk about asteroid, I want to see what is that one. Asteroid is. All right, so next week, uh, next Tuesday, to be specific, at like 4.50 in the afternoon, an yeah. asteroid is passing by Earth. It's 1.2 million miles away, which is very close by <laughs> asteroid standards. So close that they said you can see it with a, just a small telescope. And, uh, it's 24,000 Rhode Islands away. Oh, wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Good job. Uh, so they says nothing to worry about, but it's the closest and largest asteroid that's passed earth in some time. It's bigger than any two empire state buildings. I think that's what they compared it to. Yeah. If it hit the earth, they said anything within 25 square miles would be destroyed. Yeah. So it's not like one of these that like wiped out the dinosaurs, but it would, it would be super, super deadly to. Very and when would you like if you were at would you just would it be like a if you're us and it's going to hit i mean are we looking at it like a fly ball kind of situation like are we like you know <laughs> what do you mean when you got to get out of the way you know is it like you're just we're all down here oh, like you gotta uh -oh, run uh -oh, <laughs> back up you're like go 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 <laughs> like i mean how do they give us a good heads up like 
you know, hey, Texas, or like, hey, you know, right, you know, it's like, are you, are we all just kind of like, you kind of got to keep an eye, everybody go outside. It's like a punt you don't want to touch. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, well, Peter, 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 Peter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's traveling 43,000 miles an hour, so you'd have to move pretty fast. Uh, it's the closest since it was estimated to pass in 1933. These things, they come back around. So this asteroid's been here before. Well, and who it is again. <laughs> next time we're here, it'll be 2150. So, um, Will it be closer? In How are they not hitting? Did uh, they never hit? Well, meteorites and stuff hit. Yeah. The Earth. Asteroids. Yeah, I mean, you would think the luck. odds are. Yeah. But well, now, stuff has hit before, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Now NASA started this program called DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test. And seems like a weird. <laughs> what was a double asteroid? I don't, I don't know why it's called double, but it's basically they're testing it out later this year, where they're sending uh, a spacecraft in, that run into a asteroid to see if they can knock it off course. Oh, and they're just doing it just to see if it works in case that asteroid ever was going to hit Earth, so they would have a way to stop it from hitting us. To move it. To move it. Yeah. Literally, just crashing into it and see if they can move it. So he's going to have something below, like just you know. Yeah. Just bang into like it. Like an Empire State Building kind of thing. That big, that fast, and then you're just going to... So it might just go, no. Yeah, it might just bounce off and like, nope, yeah. it's still coming. Yeah. But they're testing that to keep us from... Well, I hope it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do too. <laughs> what was it in Armageddon? They went and it was drill workers. Well, Bruce Willis stayed on it. Yeah, Didn't but I can't remember what they were doing. Were they? Oh, they were drilling in and oh, blowing it up, right? yeah. yeah. That's right. He yeah. had to stay to keep it. So, he had to stay. You know, that's, this is better than that if it works. Yeah. So it's next. Uh, it's, it's tomorrow, t- right? The 18th? Oh, you're right. It is Supposed tomorrow. to come by? I was yeah. thinking next so Tuesday. So it's been this yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. So, so people might not be listening to this. Saying, maybe yeah. took a wrong turn. <laughs> it might never come out. Yeah. <laughs> thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> 451 no. Eastern. 4.51 p.m. P.m. Eastern time. We'll be able to see it in the daytime? You'll feel it? Is it going to make a I breeze? So. I don't know. We'll you know, see. like when you hear... <laughs> you're like, ooh. Phil, I heard that. I still think I saw a meteor on fire. I know I did. Once when I was a, when I was little. I forget where I was. It was low enough that I could see the flames behind it. Like a shooting star? Mm-hmm. But I could see the... like. I could. You I'm, see the fire? I could see it? the fire. Yeah. Yeah. It burned up in the atmosphere, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I believe you. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people have. You've seen that? I've seen shooting stars with their tails behind them. But if you, I mean, I could see the flames. Like it was like, you could see that much. I mean, I could tell that it's, that was flight. I mean, no, I'm seeing the red. I could see, I mean, I picture in my mind, I was a kid, I see flame, you know, it was low. How old were you? I don't remember. I remember, you know, this is back when I remembered stuff. Yeah. For pre Matrix. Uh, <laughs> do you not believe me? No, I believe you. I just, I don't know if it's any different than what other people see. If you're seeing the flames versus like, yeah, you, I, you see like a little trail of something about, like, you know, like an air, when well, you see a plane fly and you see that. Like that? Yeah. It was like that. It was his, yeah. I mean, it was fire. Yeah. That one. You're on. Yeah. Boom. This one? Yep. I believe you, dude. Yeah. I don't know why Brian doesn't. Yeah. But I, I believe you, man. Yeah. And we're going to see one again. Coming tomorrow. up soon. Yeah. Oh, it hits right here. <laughs> uh, it's the studio. Yeah. Well, well this is going to be a short one, just so people... <laughs> well, we got a lot of stuff here to talk about. Huh? We got a, a lot of fun we'll stuff. Well, go. Do another one. Bring right, it, do you have anything, Aaron, you want to share? Oh, well, no, we're going through the list. this can't be the podcast. <laughs> just to go on. All right. You got any? Well, so I have to bring everything? The the, the, the system might not work like this. All right. Was there anything uh, on that that interests you? No, it does, but it's like we got to like... Uh, it, it's it's got to be... there. Yeah, I don't know. All I right. got to rethink. The uh, it's a proof of concept yeah. episode. I just the answer can't be any. You got anything you want to bring up? There's no that can't ever be asked on there. Okay, all when right. People are listening to this. All right. Well, if you do, Aaron, just jump in. Um, you got Jeopardy, a lady, some right? Lady is uh, 
she's won 32, 33 straight in a row. She's now, I think, third most wins ever. Wow. Fourth as far as money goes. First woman to do it. Uh, so a lot of women are saying, see, women are smart too. Yeah. But she used to be a man, so. Really? Backing off that, yeah. Really? I'm joking about oh. the women saying, see, whatever. <laughs> but she did used to be a man. Oh, really? So, That's so funny. Got that going. But they think she could be the all-time winner. Ken Jennings dominates as far as most. He, he was like uh, 70 or 80, right? 74. 74 games in a row. She's almost halfway. Yeah, but she's almost to second place. In, in money earnings. And in most in most wins. So he was that much better than everybody? He was like the Wayne Gretzky of Jeopardy as far as just wins. Okay. And that's just going on now? Yep. Yep. So, we'll, we'll see. So mm-hmm. Cal's uh, farmer in Turkey learned that he can get his cows to produce more milk if he put uh, VR headsets on them to make them think they're in green pastures. <laughs> they're in a barn. And they're not producing enough milk, so we put a VR headset on them, and now they think they're in a great spot, and they're producing more milk. Where's is that? I think Turkey. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just it's what you think it would be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, mean, it's, yeah. It's, I thought it'd be a different different yeah. looking headset. That's it's, it. But they have to change the. It is a special headset. They have to change because cows see colors different. So, oh, okay. So they have to cha- adjust it for cows' colors. So oh. instead of just making the grass green around them, they give them all VR headset. Well, they're in the middle. It's like winter time there, and there's nothing green around them. <laughs> oh, so they're trying to make it seem like it is. <laughs> they're ma- trying to make them feel good about they're, themselves. They're trying to trick them into making think they're happy. Yeah, and it's working. This is in uh, Russia. Moscow. Russia started it, but the guy right now is uh, in Turkey. You would think Russia would come up with something like this. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't feel like, they're like, what if we get them VR? And they think, I don't know, maybe you would. Uh, and it, so they're doing more milk. All right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's working. It's working. It's went from 22 liters to 27 liters. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's significant, right? I think so. 22 to 27? Yeah, it's five liters. That's a lot more. They're gonna start doing this to people soon, for sure. Give the office worker VR headset. So the more work in the back, like example, like they because people are just so they're gonna have you wear VR. Yeah, they go. Well, we don't want you to think you're in a cubicle. Now you're on the beach working. Yeah, they give and then I'm sure the productivity would increase there. Oh yeah, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Yep. Yeah. I wish I was somewhere else. I wish I could see something else right. <laughs> We just put a headset on yeah. you. He didn't even realize he's here. I think other people listen to this are like, I wish they're going to, they need to be like, I got to listen to something else. <laughs> uh, to cut down on carbon emissions and air pollution, ships are now, some ships are testing being pulled by giant kites. Whew. I mean, who? <laughs> It's exactly what you think it is. It's, it's it is a, a boat being pulled by a is, kite. Yeah, it's a kite that's five thousand something square feet, um, and it's pulling ships to. So you can just see those everywhere now, just out and we go out there in the ocean, just see kites everywhere. I mean, what if it starts going? The wind starts going the other way. Well, they can still. I think it's like a car that runs on. I mean, you can still if you can still it's like a hybrid. Yeah, like a hybrid. You can do it. The normal way, but if everything's going right, if we're coasting, it's like, hey man, we're going good. Let's throw that, let's put the kite out. And have yeah, throw that course. kite up, dude. Yeah, and it pulls us. How smart do you have to be to even propose something like this? Because if if I went in there, and I don't like, know. I don't think you have to be that smart. I think anybody could come up with. But but I mean, for somebody to take it seriously, because if you and I went in there <laughs> and we're like, I got an idea. I don't know. Let's hook a this kite does, up to the boat. Yeah, this isn't. I think. I mean, I, I feel like they've been saying this for years. A I cell. <laughs> well, I mean, a cell is essentially that's what a cell is. That is what a cell is. So it's yeah. not. Well, what's the difference of this? Is like, well, like, what if we do it more like a kite and we have it? Well, that's the big difference. One's a kite and one's a sail attached to the boat. Yeah, but they're yeah. the. It's it's the general idea, and I I guess they're saying that we should do it with those. That doesn't look like it's big enough to even pull it. I think that's a really big ship. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big one, man. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, reeling that thing back. I mean, just I get it. You know, There's, you don't want uh, to pollute the ocean or whatever. It's, you know, it's doing that stuff. 
man. <laughs> Some guy on the boat just holding it. Yeah. To the other end of it. Yeah. I mean, the problems, you know, it's going to just fall in the, 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 you know, I don't know. Tangle up. Good for them, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, Matthew Stafford's wife yeah. uh, just told a story on her podcast about going on this trip with uh, where they met Leonardo DiCaprio. Have you heard this? Mm-mm. So Matthew Stafford, quarterback for the Rams, he and his wife went on vacation together with Matt Ryan, quarterback for the Falcons, and his wife. They were in Bahamas, and they were sitting at this restaurant, and I think they even had empty seats beside them, and Leonardo DiCaprio comes in with his girlfriend. They pull up a chair next to them. They all start drinking. Have, they never met before. Yeah. They all start drinking, have fun, a lot of drinks flying. And, and Leonardo says, we should play uh, beach volleyball tomorrow. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Thinking like, oh, we're just drunk. We're just saying yeah. it, whatever. <laughs> the night ends. Next day, Matt Ryan, Matthew Stafford, go play golf. The girls are going to go to the beach to lay out. They walk down to the beach. Leo's down there warming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and taking it serious. Yeah. And his girlfriend's down there too and some other people. And, and they're like, oh, crap. They're really – So oh, they yeah. call Matthew Stafford and Matt Ryan and said, get over here. Leo's down here warming yeah. up to play. So they leave the golf course. They come running back. They play volleyball, sand volleyball. Matt Ryan spikes it. It goes off someone's arm, hits Leo's girlfriend in the face. God. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, it finally ends, and he's like – I think Matt Ryan and Matthew Stafford's team won. They're like – Leo's like, what if we play some Frisbee golf? Let's go do that. And she's like, they're thinking, why does he keep challenging us to, to yeah. stuff? But I think because they're like professional athletes, he wanted to see if he could hang with yeah. the big boys. So then they go play Frisbee golf. So then they go do that. So then they said, let's do a drinking game. So then the night they're doing this drinking game and it's getting kind of out of control. And one of it, the game is take five shots or lick Matt Ryan's wife's ear four times. And everyone just thinks, well, he'll do the shots. Leo, he goes over and licks Matt Ryan's <laughs> wife's ear for like a while. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, everyone just froze like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? And that's pretty much it. It's just the crazy <laughs> trip. This, yeah. this is the craziest trip of their wow. life. So I don't feel like that's that crazy of a thing. If it was, you know, if he was like, go lick Matt Ryan's ear or something. Like, mm-hmm. uh, it sounds like he was getting into it. Yeah, four shots, though. That's a lot. Like, if you're like, I don't want to be. Well, they're all drunk already. Yeah, I know. But if maybe you're just enough to go like, I don't want to be just miserable. <laughs> Leonardo Capra, I mean, he's 45 years old or something yeah, like that, right? Yeah. Like, uh-huh. it's not like he's 20. But if he licks Matt Ryan, it's just a funny guy's playing around. His wife, that's kind of intimate. That's weird. Yeah, I know. But that's what I'm saying. Like, that wouldn't. So Leo's like, you know, that's. Why would he think that's weird? Like you know, if you li- if you went and looked a woman's ear, like yeah. as a dude, that's how he like, greets all women. Be, yeah. Probably, he's forty seven. Forty seven. Yeah, that's getting up there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. That's like, see, that's like the thing where, like, if you're like that, and you go and do that, like, that's like, does, and then now the story gets out. Like you can't ever, like, if you're him, you can never just go. Like I thought, we could just hang out. Yeah. And it's always like, this is even when you're with other, and I'm not, it's, you know, it's just like, yeah, you're just that famous. Mm-hmm. Right. That yeah. you're. Yeah. Now, Matthew Stafford's wife, so she's a wild card herself. She got, I don't think she can even go to their games anymore because yeah. she gets in fights with fans and <laughs> really? stuff like that. And she has her own podcast. So I think she just. Oh, she talked about it on her podcast. I think so. Yeah. 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 Wow. So we're talking about CPAP. So I guess yeah. <laughs> it's understandable. Yes. She might slip a story in about Leo. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. But it is crazy. That's how when you when guys are, when you're that famous, it's like you just everybody's going to do it. And we talk about that one. T- like you're not going to not take a picture with them. You're not going to not. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like they're just too famous. And yeah. They're just like you're like, dude, this is too crazy. And you know. Yeah. Look how famous those guys are. NFL quarterbacks. Right. It's not even close. Yeah. yeah. And it's they're even, so starstruck. Oh yeah, I mean that you know they 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 wouldn't if you anybody else was like hey these warming up to play volleyball they'd be like well we're not tell them we're not going yeah <laughs> and then Leonardo DiCaprio you're like we got to go yeah like, cancel our tea time yeah and come back yeah. rush back yeah and rush back yeah like he's down here warming up <laughs> like he's he's enough that would make you go do it if you had a tea time and Brian and I were gonna play volleyball <laughs> would you <laughs> no I don't even know what I don't think we'd be at the same place. <laughs> I don't even think he'd answer the phone yeah. call. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We were at the Holiday Inn down the street. Yeah. Yeah, I walked all the way up on the beach. 
and to see a bucket hat. <laughs> <laughs> no sunscreen ever <laughs> like your dad slaps it on yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> just go play some playing beach fo- i mean two is like what are the teams i guess it's i think some workers they said were there too like that worked at the resort played yeah. with them because oh, okay. when he spiked the ball i don't think he spiked it right off her face i think he spiked it off someone's arm and hit her in the yeah. face I would think they would need to take it easy, Matthew Stafford yeah, and Ryan. Yeah, two you'd NFL like, quarterbacks. Yeah, and they're big, both big, and you'd be like, y'all could probably tone it down a little, <laughs> bit. like you know, they're competitive. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. But it's like, I don't know if you should be spiking it. You could be like, I don't know if we'll spike it. <laughs> just have a fun. Just it's a fun game. Yeah, just. A but fun I guess game. if Leonardo DiCaprio is warming up, stretching, taking it seriously, you got. I gotta. It's a possible forty-seven-year-old alcoholic. <laughs> uh, so you maybe. <laughs> Maybe you let, yeah, let him stretch a little bit. Like I mean, you're in your prime, and go. Oh, is he taking it serious? All right, we're taking it serious too. You know, that's a good point. He would be. He he's one. I would always. I'd like think about. Like I want to meet him. I like him. Brad Pitt, Denzel Washington. Think about Denzel a lot lately. You're like those would be, like people that you kind of go. You're like that's that's who would be fun to meet. But do you want to meet them or do you want to meet the characters they've played? I think I want to meet them. Tom, Tom I, I Cruise? think they're so but uh yeah Tom Cruise I, I Tom Cruise would be great too yeah like just those I mean it's them it's those you know it's like you're you're just kind of like these kind of crazy you're like man mm-hmm. but those are all guys that have been around forever like who from your generation would you want to meet Kevin James <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was thinking about Tony some. Robbins. Are you serious? Oh, the, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. You'd want to meet Morgan Tony. Freeman. Yeah. Everybody from Shawshank. You just named three people older than the guys he named. I know. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like Bob Gunton. I'd meet all my heroes. Who's dude. that? <laughs> He's the prison warden from Shawshank. Oh. I don't know. I don't care about anybody. I'm trying to think of who's my age. I think maybe the oldest, like Seth Rogen and those that group of guys, they're like 10 years older than me. They're probably in their 40s, right? I'd like to meet those guys. You know? Yeah. yeah. Like, James uh, Franco, those dudes. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot in common with them? <laughs> <laughs> James Franco just getting a bunch of trouble. How much yeah. do you have in common with Denzel Washington? I'm just Washington. joking because I'm saying James Franco just didn't get in much trouble. Oh, 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 like oh, that. oh I don't and know. Like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. But John yeah, Chris. Yeah it's, yeah, it's not the, yeah. Hey, that's not the version you're like, you know, I'd like to eat Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> just he's a... I don't think I don't even know what James Franco. This is another dude. It's just funny to me. All right, all right. I think we're good. This was on the whole podcast. I, I think, think so. I think yeah. it's a wrap on. Nate I think Land. it was a wrap. No, it's not a wrap on Nate Land. Uh, I think there could be some fine tuning. <laughs> and this was a long weekend for me, so I was a little tired. But uh, you want to mention our guest set in? We have we had Zoe set in. Zoe, welcome. You can come say hi. We had uh, just came in and uh, said it. We had uh, uh, and my nephew Caleb is here. All we, right. had, we had two couple of guests. There's Zoe. You can see, say hi, wave at everybody, uh, <laughs> dancing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, should have sit through that. Sit through this. Did you like it, Zoe? No good. I thought it was one of your best episodes yet. Oh, Thank there, you, we go, Zoe. there we go. Thank Zoe. you. There we go. Thank you. We like okay. it. All right, welcome. Uh, I mean, I was, uh, hello, folks. <laughs> uh, now care. the real one's starting. Now, yeah. <laughs> we will, uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. We love you. Uh, see you next week. Wichita, this weekend. Wednesday. <laughs>